Hello there, this is not a test, this is very much the upper bracket semi-final of the Master League Tournament 5. This is a best of five featuring two of the finest players in the game today. We've got Asilda playing as the Soviets. I'm AE, I'm casting today with Ed 80 Hertz introducing the player from the east. From the east, the beast from the east is the young Kimbo and he is automatically locked in... Is this strategic reserves? I don't even know what this is doctrine's called, but it's got a command P4 and it's got an elephant, but it doesn't have the elephant shown as a logo due to <laughs> the patches, so it's debating the hell out of me. Fortified armor, there we go. <laughs> it does show it if you if you hover over the commander. This 32-bit beta that we're having to play on due to uh, systems issues, let's call it. Um, it does unfortunately show the wrong UI elements in the taskbar below. But what is not showing anything wrong right now is we do have two excellent players in the semi-final with a clash of styles present. Isilda is a control-based player. He aims to grind you down and beat you up in the long run. He jabs moves and wears you out and also pokes holes in your defences and probes you. Kimbo doesn't mess around with that, Ed. He just goes straight <laughs> for it. He's head down, guns blazing, straight in there. So we've got a rush player versus a control player. So a classic yeah. matchup, much like Dev M Love Nest, Isilda Kimbo is all the same good stuff, that stylistic wonder that we love to see. Yeah, it's, it's a nice clash of styles because this will do his poise and positioning. That's what he focuses on, especially in the early game. Whereas Kimbo could just brute force his way through a brick wall at times in Code 2, it seems. And uh, yeah, here we go with the first proper engagement as uh, Grenadiers do get into a good green cover position whilst flanking the Engineers, so their cover's immediately negated. But th once again, Isidore, clever work, just tiptoes away and relocates around to create a 2v1 up north. And those Grens are going to have to hightail the hell out of here. They're going to hide for now. They're going to buy time, Ed, just for now. And every second they mm -hmm. buy is distracting two conscripts away from the situation. So Isilda goes to meet the heavy cover Grenadiers in the center. But we do have Kimbo, by the way, pushing the fuel in the southwest, neutralizing it for now. But we had no fuel taken thus far. Grens spring from behind the, the tree line and have to vacate the position again. But that's given time for the MG to join the fighting. Yeah, and those loving the resource war, you see an early muni lead for Kimbo as opposed to a slightly earlier, a better fuel lead for Isildur. So, as Oster, you really need that muni early because there's so many things depend upon it. The LMGs Big. for the Grens and the Helen. Definitely. Wehrmacht have always, always been a munition-starved faction. It's their uh, funnel, their bottleneck. And if you can get munis, I th I've always thought, why well, Wehrmacht players don't do it more often? I mean, yeah, you get the 2-2-2 a little bit earlier, but LMGs earlier, they count, They that's good as well. I'm not going to say it's better, but it's certainly good as well. Now, let me just introduce the map. It is Bayo, but not as you know it. This is uh, Bayo Ambush. This is the final tournament variant. Mine there, by the way, for Isilda. Tournament variant of Bayo. We have it this way, so any changes, you know it's not the auto-match version, basically. The changes here is the map exits are a little bit bigger, so you don't get log-jammed with your tanks. Also, um... There's no more floating s snow effects now, so Kim, uh, so Nagano's PC will no longer explode, <laughs> which was a complaint from the Russian. So yeah, we've just said um, Nagano's dropped out the tournament, <laughs> so it didn't matter anyway. <laughs> he doesn't nah. have a face. <laughs> <laughs> MG pushes up along this very famous uh, hedgerow here or tree line as the Grens push for the central victory point. And so far, we don't even have to look at the tap map, but I'll show you anyway, Ed. It's all Kimbo thus far. He's won his. Uh, Hit the engagements in the northeast around that fuel point, Ed. He won them, yep. and now we're seeing the map control that follows. I think Kimbo in a past life was a miner, like a dwarven miner, because he's so good at mining himself, but also finding the opponents. And straight away, he snuffed out with the sweepers that mine because he knows himself he would plant that mine. So he's read Isildur first, first blood there on the mine front for uh, Kimbo there. Really good play. No surprises to me as Co2 enters its competitive end game in the final years of the series life time, which will probably last three decades. Or the it's all about mines at top level. It always will be and always shall be. You know, it's just mines and counter mining. Same as it was in Co1 back in the day, basically. What's this mm. we're seeing? A little bit of med pack field 
Aid kit usage in the front lines, very good. Kimbo continuing to put the pressure on. Asilda's really suffering. You'd have to get the replay of this, Ed, slow it down to truly analyse all of the small engagement wins Kimbo has had. They've been on our screens, but for mm. us mere mortals, it's so difficult to process in real time. But also people looking back at it will think, how, how has Kimbo been able to get this infantry um, <gasps> powerhouse going? And that is basically because of four cons. Uh, wasn't picked for Isildur. He went three cons with two engineers. It leaves itself a bit open. And uh, Kimbo's exploited that fully with four grenadiers of himself. Okay, he's struggling on the healing front, but he's still making it work. And uh, yeah, you just see how red the map is. It does look like a very good time for Axis on this Bayer ambush at the moment. Some players have um, chosen a very, very good time to complain about this map being the week of the third day of the tournament rather than the two-month consultation process in the build-up to the tournament to say that Bayo is Axis friendly. And it is! It's a really good Axis map, so you've got to win your Axis game, Ed. And Kimbo's absolutely dominating his Axis right now. And Asilda probably had to the back of his mind, well, kind of expected to be up against it anyway. It is game one, it's a best of five, it's on Bayo, famous map for MG usage, really nice open sight lines like we're seeing here. Um, but not like this, man. Y you don't want to go down like this at any point. 500 VPs remaining not, for Kimbo at this point. It's not too terrible though, if he gets the fuel back under control, which he is doing now. Then uh, it's what, 2 minutes for a T70? And we're looking at a 9 minute T70. It's not MG the worst. The pressure. But... Look at that though, 251 to the rescue, Ed. Reinforcing the MG in the heat of combat. Oh, but a bad setup. They're going to lose all their models. If these engineers are doing some damage as well. This could be a dropped MG42, but he did have the sweep sweepers to cover it and pick it up if need be. And uh, no Ura there for Missador to, to ah. make sure of the wipe. Got popped but he gets match it anyway. range. Got packed yeah. at max range, and then we got the flamer burst from the 251, forcing away the conscripts. We don't have 18 edge yet, so the 251 will continue Kimbo's dominance of the map. Maybe AT gun they brought in just as a little soft counter towards this uh, flame flammity flippin' Z half track. But I, the flame half track is it's kind of a. I get the choice, it's a bit 2017, 2018. Just. <laughs> Uh, bringing AFK lock in this, but it's a lot of munitions munitions that could have gone on LMG Grens, which is so good on this type of map, especially with the setup and uh, the green cover positionings that he could have uh, on the advances of Isildur's troops out of the base, but yeah, in the end it's, he's going to go for healing now, get all his troops back up to full, and then save towards those glorious LMGs for the Grens. Did you say all that without breathing? Uh, that was impressive. <laughs> M42, M42 finds the 251. Two shots in. Gren's watching on. We do. We have had um, the flames lingering there, but the conscripts are not standing inside them. MG's on its own, save for the three-man grenade. Do we have a flank coming from a Silder? You'd hope so. And here come the boys. He's got a reposition in the face of that. Will he see it in time? We do have LMGs up on this grenadier, so he should be able to defend himself. Yeah, and upgrading the flame half track means he doesn't have the reinforcement of the half track as well. I thought he was going to go for reinforcement with four guns, but could lead to some hella manpower problems. But uh, Isildur's got to crack this nut now. Uh, Kimbo's presenting, and uh, Kimbo's well on his way to a fast P4 map. That could be 11 minute P4 behind the 30 fuel cost of the flame half track. That's pretty good going. Isildur's finally getting one of the uh, points of contention. On every map, there's uh, three victory points and four high points. This will be his first <laughs> of those seven points to be captured for f like four, three or four minutes. Really tough game for him so far. He's just trying to get his fuel right now. And Kimbo doesn't want him to have any of those seven points, Ed. Well, the thing is, he's, he's playing uh, Kimbo's game. Kimbo set the pace. He's working the jab, as it were, and uh, Isildur's just eating at the moment. He's not going north. He could just send one squad north on a capping mission, but he's he's trying to uh, take Kimbo head on, which I think has worked out for the Polish Prodigy here. It really has. He's just played so well with the MG. T70 pushing in now. 251 rocking back. M42 did get a shot in. Can the T70 rock in? There's a Faust threatening, though, and Isildur senses it, gets out of the smoke before the Gren can get it off. Yeah, as we see some more LMGs upgraded on the Grens, finally a pack gun was brought out, but it's going to cost a lot the manpower of Kimbo, so he's not going full ham on trying to get that tier 3 and P4 out, so 
That's going to be a bit delayed. Pioneers, he's only got one squad of them. So they're going to be overworked. And uh, suddenly, like I said, this will do with that 9 minute T70 mat. It's a bit later, but still back. He's got a perfect platform now to work his way back into the game and try and get some map control. Desperately the before the medium armor. The T70 yeah. is like an early 90s dance song because it's always right on time. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if that's the lyrics to that song, but whatever, right on time. Right it is, on time. It, it is, but there's it is. never, it's never late as the T70. Uh, it's just, it's always so useful. Uh, Mid-game, when there's Panzer Falls on the field, you can go back cap and you can defend your um, Zis guns from infantry pushes. You can do everything with a T70. Yes, the best time is five and a half minutes into a game. That's the earliest possible time, but, you know, you can always make use of one. He does have an AT gun. He doesn't have AT nades yet. I haven't seen many mines from the English. Englishman is Silda, but um, you know he's got one now. Yeah, he's well, a little bit of. Um... Go on, sorry Ed. So yeah, an early sweeper from Kimbo meant he knew his mind game was kind of up in the, in the very early game. Also, the pressure that Kimbo put on, he didn't have the time to set up any mines unless, like I said, if he uh, split a squad and made it up north to some cap and run, he could have laid a lot more up there. He's lost a combat engineer though. Has uh, Isildur has brought out a Dushka instead bring up some additional firepower but uh yeah kimbo well on his way now just needs to get his pioneers building <laughs> so he does um, it's it's tough when you've only got one squad of them as uh austin but here comes a faust t70 yep he's one just been away. fausted indeed the where's the pack at no the pack's in position kimbo's tracking his target beautifully magnificently takes out the t70 what a good one to punch there silda thought he could push in the south no he could not pack was also right on time. Still three victory points in the Polish man's possession. He uh, doesn't have both fuel points anymore, but that's just a token gesture to Isilda, who's certainly back on his haunches. He hasn't taken a single victory point away from Kimbo yet. Yeah, this is a uh, ace performance from Kimbo so far. I'm I'm surprised Isildur let his T70 guard down that, that much this early because, uh, you know, it, it had no infantry support ahead of it. And something as prized possession as a T-70 in the Soviet army at this juncture. You would have thought he would have played a lot more conservatively with it, but due to the VP pressure from Kimbo, probably forced out the, the irrational reaction. And he's from thrown in, he's tapped out, he's had to tap out early round one aggression Jeez. from Kimbo. 1-0 to the Polishman in this best of five. We would just say, Ed just said, we, let's see what happens when uh, Kimbo is allies. I mean, I've seen lots of good allied wins on Bayo. Do you know what the secret, Ed? You're going to love the answer. Some indirect bloody fire. Mm. I've seen Orange Pest nail people with Pakawis on that map. Really good opponents. I've seen, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Sh Sherman Calliope's all sorts. You know, Soviets on that map don't feel as, as uh, ruthless as USF can be. That map is all about swinging around blind bends, you know, it's a bit laney like a Dota map. Yeah. <laughs> and and the mid and the, the flanks, you can really come around with a, a cav rifleman or a rifleman squad and, and ruin an Austria's place day. So I think um picking Soviets there and then the defensive doctrine as well didn't really cause Kimbo much problems. I think he's seen it a thousand times and uh absolutely rotivated through Isildur's troops there. And uh, yeah, what was that? Eleven minute GG. That's a something very rare, like that. It was uh, like a Starcraft game, Ed. It was like a Starcraft mm -hmm. game, mate. It was very quick and direct and to the point. Um, just well played by the man. Very good. It's, it's good. It'd be good to study that, to be honest, from Kim. But I think it wasn't necessarily, by the way, with the T70 loss. I do think, obviously, he was a tiny bit complacent, but I would put the onus more on Kimbo's pack positioning. A lot of mm. players would have cycled that pack around the outside of the hedgerows. He went through the centre. He sensed <laughs> yeah. with he the movement of the T70. As well. like, yeah, exactly. The... It was, yeah. He sensed it. And just, just to, obviously, Kimbo mm. was playing a lot with the player that got banned a couple of months ago, but we've had a referee watching Kimbo's uh, camera perspective and he's been absolutely fine with it he's been a gentleman at every game of this tournament I only say that because there's people that 
uh, have their own suspicions and they're always uh, casting aspersions. But to Kimbo's credit, he's been an utter gentleman in this tournament so far and he's been under um, observation. So just to, just to completely put any fears at rest, you are watching a master at work and he's completely 100% natty, as they would say in combat sports. <laughs> but anyway... Yeah, Why are you dressed it... like Olivia Newton-John, one person says, Ed? What do I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just put all my sweatbands on because I knew it would be a sweaty affair with Vizzledor and um, us casting. So, yeah. yeah sweaty nerd gaming. <laughs> <laughs> Got to gotta live up to it. But also, I think it's... it's We can't take too much from that one game, I don't think. Let, let's let's see how it sort of responds because Kimbo is very strong with Oster, especially when he gets four Gwens out and just completely over overrides the map with amazing pressure. So I think Isidore now getting a, a chance at Axis that will that will be the true test. If he if he gets Rick rolled again in this game uh, by Kimbo, then oh my God, we're, we're probably in for a short best of five. But let's uh, see if we are. Let's see yeah. game two right now. Here we go. Here we see the pioneers of a player, but they're not any old pioneers. They're absolutely horrendously shell-shocked at the moment. They have been utterly awestruck by the shock and awe of the Polish prodigy Kimbo. Ed, what a game one that was. Yeah, it was a blinked and you miss it, that kind of game. It's just, it happens, it happens. Isildur maybe just not fully woken up or warmed up, but Kimbo was white hot, Matt. You can't take it away from him. He was... He was definitely just his positioning, but also his pressure that he exerted on Isildur was just forcing lots of little tactical errors. And uh, yeah, I think Kimbo heard me in the inter inter game period, and he's locked in USF map this time, which I feel can prove a little bit more pressure on this map as well as you were talking about the pack hours. He's definitely got that option with this recon support drop in. We've got uh, two rifles. Gren and MG and a doctrinal choice of recon support company with INR Pathfinders. This is pre patch by the way. I know there's that um commander revamp is it with the INR getting a bit of a nerf. But I'm pretty sure this hey. is from when <laughs> IRs can absolutely obliterate everything in five seconds, you know. Support weapons can just see that's themselves really die. Good, yeah. But they can just see themselves die. They tell everybody, we're about to die and I'm like, Yeah, we can't do anything about it. Goodbye. <laughs> and here they are, the Finders <laughs> of the path to victory. There's the four of them. The They're devilish, and they've got fake. Um... Remember when these were three man and the most squishy unit in the game? Like no one built them, and then oh, yeah. suddenly, like with no change in their armor or whatever they wear <laughs> suddenly they're like tanks that could just <laughs> snipe away and never get hit so yeah it was a bit of a weird one but uh yeah like you said the revamp might address it but here we go first proper engagement round the blind bend come the rifleman and it's going to be a right slobber knocker up close you fancy yes. the m1 garands Silda's lost here red and he knows it the first Gren to fall means he's then outmatched, he's 2-1, so he gets out of there. That means he's going to lose the connection to his fuel, so it makes this engagement all the important now. But he's got Pathfinders against Pioneers down there, so already Kimbo is having the better of it. And you've got to say it's because he converged on this point here, Red. I will try and analyse it for the people that don't follow, you know, top level co. He could, he came to the point from two different angles. He distracted yeah. the Grens, got focus fired. What The one that got focus fired was behind light cover and he prospered. Meanwhile, we've now got riflemen against two grenadiers. That's not going to go well for Kimbo. And he no. could retreat through MG fire here. And it's a late retreat as well, so it's a lot of manpower loss. He's probably going to lose the third model. Yep, there we go. So <sighs> the, the brilliance and then the... Uh, no, he's the been lucky so there. Brilliant. Hedro, algorithm, yeah. nice. He gets out of the arc of the MG. Meanwhile, he has had his own fuel, and Isilda's not had any of his. So, of course, with USF, it's all about getting that lieutenant out ASAP, and he'll be out soon, and then he'll be on to getting the... Uh, Oh, one of the many side techs in Co2 these days. You need those uh, tech trees out <laughs> yeah. from your box, you know. <laughs> Take... 
I was in an hour long TV2 game with a mate the other day and we couldn't figure out for the life of us why he <laughs> couldn't get a KT because he had all the had all the trucks, had the doctrine selected, everything. And then we realized the battle grouper needed to be mechanized. Oh, you <laughs> hadn't great. you hadn't requested authorization <laughs> for the second set oh of uh, sponsors on KT. the <laughs> Yeah, you need to get the schematic drawings taken to Vermat <laughs> HQ, mate, and then you need to fill out a KT requisition form. That can take three weeks. You need two levels of authorization. <laughs> Mate, what are you playing at? Have you not read the user operational manual? What are you yeah, doing? The, the Rifleman low, back to reality like as Grens you. hunt them down. Will they escape here? Negative cover was kicking in somehow there as well. I can't no, see it with my cursor, but very no lucky survival. Yeah, yeah. No, I think. Why no chase? That's it. the weirdest bit. Well, he's getting healing up in chase. base. He's getting up healing up in base, but that's no excuse for me. I mean, he could have got mm. one last car 98k shot off, surely. Mm. I think. I think uh, also you could have decapped in that time as well. But uh, two squads now, Funkin, we're coming up the middle. A bit more predictable though, putting his squads together. The reason his first rifleman engagement worked so well is because they came from different angles, like the raptors of uh, Jurassic Park. But it's sort of now. He's putting to be a clever MG girl, right doesn't he? Space. Yeah, <laughs> but no shotguns hit, only uh, Springfields to worry about and M1 Garands. Grens fight against the riflemen as they close the distance, but indeed they do. They get there, but not all of the squad were actually behind that heavy cover. They're pushed away now. Here we have an M20 immediately getting the skirts upgraded. With a lot of fighting, a lot of points, and a lot of decapping from Kimbo as well. Just good work by the poles so far. Let's check out the stats very quickly, Ed, and just see that uh, although Isildur's had better KD, if you go over to the points held graph with me, you can mm. see that Kimbo's uh, dominating on that front. Yeah, but it's a oh, it's a short-lived uh, spike, I think, because of that manpower. It's going to come back to hurt Kimbo in uh, getting his next troops ahead, and it's typically clunky trying to get an AT out. So he's going to save for Stuart as well as probably Kimbo. Whereas Isildur getting up two, two, two now, so no flame half track for him. It's against USF, so he wants a bit of that two, two, two pressure on the M20. And uh, yeah, I, I I do think. That KD was was very good for for Isildur. That's got to count for something later on in the game. Certainly, if these Grands keep pumping out these kills and get LMGs up on this map, they can be very very potent indeed. Pioneers up against the rear echelons in the south. We've got emerging skirmishes in the centre as the 222 surveys the scenario, and it's got to get in there before the Stuart hits. The Stuart will be soon to follow, thanks to Kimbo's excellent fuel control in this game thus far. Yeah, but the tides are turning as uh, Kimbo now has the 2 to 2 to deal with without the steward. So, steward's half built. Let's see how much uh, Isidore can get done with this combo. He's got about 30 seconds open window to try and get back a lot of the map with the 2 to 2 pressure and the pack 40s in tow. So, it's a good position for both players. Look at That's... this, Ed. We've got raid tactics Ooh. being utilized by the M20. Finally, Decapping yeah. the high muni, just getting in there. Hearing the 222 moving, his Kimbo constantly using his ears as a sensory organ to, uh, <laughs> you know, just reposition and get yeah, the hell Kimbo out of Yeah, Kimbo a lot of munis, so why not? And they're decapping the Oste munis, like I said before. It's very painful, but it also gives them... Look at the eyeball <laughs> above all the infantry of uh, the Sight USF. range, let's show that off. Yeah. Let's see that. So look at that boost. Sees the Grens coming a mile off. That's a pretty nifty trick as well. Be able to stop the cap with his little M20 whilst his ability's on. But now it's well enough. But oof. Grins very low. Yeah, he's reversing after them. He's going to eat a Faust here. That could be the end of the M20. But it'd be worth if he gets a Gren. Can't get it. Faust incoming, but he's covered for it. He'll be all right. Meanwhile, the Stuart's finding the 2-2-2, the two, 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 but the pack's waiting. Will he go past? Yes, he will. He has two targets in his sights. One's the Gren. The other's the scout car. He has to reverse past the pack. Gets one last shot off on the Gren. Pack's turning around, though. Will he get him, Ed? No, another Gren. I think it's going to be the target. Nope. Oh, I can't pick them off either. They're on one per low HP. But yeah, Kimbo is trying his luck there a bit, but... Survives with both light vehicles, as does Isildur, but Isildur sneaks away with his Grens all alive. That was key there for the Oster player. Needs these Grens to do work with the LMGs. And uh, yeah, Isildur finally locking in his fourth Grenadier, so 
taking a page out of Kimbo's previous book in the in the match before and here we go Matt this is a proper 50-50 now and a lot more um, balanced compared to the game one Von Aston in chat who of course has played a lot of these players before says that Izzy dodged a bullet there and you have to agree he was ever so slightly lucky with that one model Gren somehow surviving he has built a fourth Grenadier though showing that he is all about that infantry power creep in this game Ed so it matters so much that that third Gren did survive with the veterans and the LMG on yeah. board because that's his whole build here it's all about Gren dominance in the late game well Kimbo could have been even more of a Von Ivan S Kimbo and really <laughs> sat down on his shots with the Stuart there and potentially wiped two Grens before he loses his Stuart, but he thought Stuart's too valuable and fair enough, that's why he's in Master League's finals and that's why I'm top 1000. <laughs> but you are top 1000. There may only be 1002 players, Ed, but you can't take that away from me. You applaud it, speak for themselves. The Stuart pushes in, Grens retreat instantly that's the kind of preservation that gets you to a late game yeah that's what i was going to say it was it's just really thinking ahead of like right how vital this is to for me to beat us at all he values it a lot so he he kept it out of there instead of potentially wiping two guns five quid in the hands worth ten in the bush still definitely thing. it's always better to can't not count your chickens before they've hatched and that's exactly what he's doing here many english idioms to speak about Isilda the Englishman who was uh, playing cautiously as Kimbo had a fantastic game on he's still playing out of his mind he's coming up against a harder front this time Isilda as Wehrmacht on, Wehrmacht on this map is going to be a harder nut to crack certainly yeah and the 2-2-2 two -two -two spotting for the pack gun that was a huge shot from downtown I, w I wonder if it was a attack ground preemptively or must have been max range because that was a very long pack hit onto the Stuart there. Well played from uh, Isudor. And he's still got all his doctrines available, Matt. So that power spike could be going back in his favor again. If you have as much game sense as these guys, you have a feel for the path of vehicles. You can hear them, of course, but you have a feel for their natural um, angle of attack, mm. let's say, and, and retreat. Uh, and that's what you, you often see with a lot of these attack grounds at max range. They're very good at predicting where the vehicle will be. Um, they have left and right audio channels, yes, but they can also kind of feel for it. Yeah, and as uh, <laughs> Kimbo gets the feel for his brand new shiny BARs, the Browning Automatic Rifles ripping up the Grand Zone in the north. Bazooka's on the rear echelons though, 222 forces away, got three MP40s pushing in with the LMG hunting them down. Let's check out the southern cap in, we've got the... Uh, the M20 versus LMG Grenadier. That's an interesting battle, especially behind heavy <laughs> cover. Okay, let's uh, not watch that one. Looks like a tightrope test video. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it does, yes. <laughs> Between an M20 and it. A... <laughs> and it's not got the upgrade. Oh, it does have the upgraded armor. Okay, M20 should be able to grind that one out. Did indeed win down there. Yeah. Well said, Ed. Your testing is complete. Well, who, who ever gets the upgraded side skirts on an M20? That's quite off meta for uh, Kimberly. There's a few American YouTubers that make YouTube videos. Oh, hang on. Let's just, just not go into La La Land quite yet. We just need to keep an eye on this pack 40. Forcing away the Stuart. There's a few American YouTubers that do testing videos on YouTube. They're like, what would win, guys? 7,000 LMGs or one King Tiger tank? <laughs> and then you've got uh, Tightrope. Well, I've... Um, I've been testing for several weeks now, and I can confirm that an MP40 is better at close range. <laughs> you know, it's much more useful, of course. Not quite as many views, and he puts so much more time into it. <laughs> That's yeah, the, the testing he does and, and the stats of players know is crazy. One of the but few feel... Patreons I would say people should support. Master League and uh, Mr. Tightrope, I'd say. He does a good service to the community in that sense. Um, 2 to 2 pushes in. we got LMGs watching on. Rear Echelon's pushing into the center. This is all over the place, Ed. We like it. Hot and messy with triple engagements everywhere. Yeah, I haven't found any Telemines yet, though. So Isidore's not been able to, to get in down like him, but he didn't get last time, but um, didn't seem to matter in the previous game. It was already over by this time. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a lot better closer game for the fans and everyone to watch here. But um, it's going to get pretty risky now with live vehicles. There's double pack for Isidore. Double and he's pack operating... As singles with the pack, so he can't finish off a vehicle easily, but he can keep them both off the center of the map with ease. 
So it's a trade-off, Ed. You'll never finish off the light vehicles in one go, but you'll always keep them out of the picture. And there's two schools of thought on that. Some people like the way Isilda's playing with it, and some people would rather see you gamble and try and just take a vehicle out in one go. Yeah, definitely like this call as well from Isildur. Just mentioned the double packs there, Matt, with you, and now double MG as well, so support weapons galore. I think Invo could even think about bringing in the old, um, either a HE Sherman rush that next, or the Pak Howie group, and get some power troopers with, with indirect, because this is a lot of support weapons coming. Definitely. Ed, I've got... To agree with your point completely and follow it on, just before we just make sure we're not missing any on these engagements, by the way. But uh, do you ever read those books as a kid where it's multiple choice options and then flip to page 78 to find out what happens? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, You're yeah, Kimbo yeah. right now. <laughs> do you A, invest in indirect fire, or B, carry on light vehicles into Shermans? I think B is the same. Uh, okay. It's light vehicles and Shermans, go to the go to page 98. Is. This is the end of your story. <laughs> you die. <laughs> Progress to Mill Road, 1-1. One, one. I'm sorry, but no indirect fire for the US player. We're going to see a grind. It's going to go about 40 to 50 minutes, and Isilda will reign supreme, unless we see something crazy like a three Sherman Russian with smoke. But indirect fire is such a safer option for USF for me. I just, we don't see elite players go, and I make this point every game, and I know a lot of top level players agree with me in private. Like Ashablar was saying, yeah, I completely agree, it's completely underrated, but I never see them use it. <laughs> it's like, what's I think it's just, a, it's just a resource, it's a resource thing. Look at the manpower and fuel, that's perfect timing to get your um, major, which provides some indirect and some vision with the recon. Yeah. And then um, an M4 Sherman with the HE can blap some Grens and. As soon as you take out the Grens of uh, Austria, they fall apart. So uh, I, th I can see your point with the, the pack out. It, it is vital, but if you've not had the manpower due to those bad engagements in like minute one and two of Kimbo, yeah. after the first minute, oh. he lost a lot Sorry, of manpower. Sorry, it's Mem 20's in no peril. The 2 to 2s pushing in. Pack's got another shot possible, but there is a retreat path here. The down Stuka, well, it's covered in snow these days, but the down Stuka path, and he's going to go around the side. He escapes with the M20 oh. intact. <laughs> Le back passage. <laughs> it is, um, M20 safe up there, but yeah, I think due to the manpower losses of Kimbo in in the early mid game, I think that's why he's not got the uh, pack how he's so far. And once you can't get it that early, it's going to be a long old time in your shopping list build order. Until you Definitely, and you've got as in. I say, it seems to be a choice. You keep mobile, you keep on your feet, and you not don't get chance to in, in, invest in American support weapons. And I, I agree completely, Ed. If you're manpower starved, you don't really get the choice. Pa Panzer IV's now out. He's definitely going to need one support weapon, and that's the M1 that he does have on the field. It has yep. already hit the 222 once. I think it was very recently, actually. Ooh. Oh, the reload rate, though, of the M1 is deceptively so fast, though. That 222 that has got to be really safe now. It's about to hit Vet 2. It's like one pixel away from Veterans 2s. This is fine, just fine, sound sick, and uh, yeah, then it gets a lot of vision buff for Isildur, so he's done very well on preservation. You see how vetted his Grens are now, and he gets the double pie and the back up this P4. So, sitting pretty is Isildur on Axis now. Nice um, flank there with the smoke against the MG42. Maybe the smoke was. Ah, of course, it was precautionary for when the pack repositioned, so he's atta attacking it. In the meantime, but the Panzer IV doesn't care about smoke. It'll drive through it and then miss wantonly. Is Dev M on board this Panzer IV? It's very likely. He needs to go stationary, perhaps, to get a good shot in. He's getting shot from the rear, and here comes the Kim Blob. Ooh, P4 did not have a good, good little first venture onto the battlefield there against the M20. I don't know what it was doing, but um, yeah, M20 got away with that. He drove forward, did Kimberly. And so you lose all that uh, momentum and, and deceleration. He has to then reverse and back up, but he's quick thinking and he just kept driving forward rather than backing up and reversing. So quick little tip there to players with their light vehicle micro. Sometimes it's better just to keep driving in the path you're going rather than backing up and taking all that reverse time. Definitely. And um, we've got Kimbo, he's now um, upgraded all eyes, oh, doing more upgrades. So, no, he hasn't. There we go. There's the uh, Major's rapid barrage. I was hoping that he'd use that. I was about to say, he's done all of his upgrades now. We can start investing into off map artillery, unless the Major dies right now. 
No, Panzerfall doesn't attack him in the fog of war. I thought that could happen there. I mean, oh, M20's found the Grenadiers capping with his pants down. Could punish him. There's got to be a snipe, surely. I don't know if he can focus the model. No, he couldn't. But it's good to have the supporting squad there threatening the Faust from Missile Door. And just to take a bit of the uh, focus fire away from the retreating Gren. So another Grenadier gets back on 1 HP. These little things are adding up now, Matt. We saw two Grens barely survive in his base and one just there. So, yeah, Kimbo's going to have to do something special, it seems, to break the fortunate ways of Isildur in this game, as well as the, you know, top tier playing he's, he's uh, putting on show as well. Yeah. Um, fun um, tip for beginner players here. So, uh, Kimbo's capping on the edge of the circle, so he's not revealed that this is a two-man captain, a very easily wipeable squad. So this Grenadier isn't going to kill it. Had he capped in the centre of the circle, that would be a dead squad. So these small differences are what separate the elite level and the top level from us mere mortals out there. So just a little uh, tip for you guys. So here we go, finally with the Sherman, as predicted from Kimbo. Um, <laughs> we might even see a, more of a delay on the pack out and it be a Jackson to support this, but Isidore's had one P4 and he's very close to his second, so he's about to hit that critical timing window. 20, 21 minutes, usually two P4s as Oster. That's kind of go time, backed up by double pack. And uh, oh, Kimbo's got to find a way to break through, perhaps with a major artillery from the guards could help out. But this is a very staunch line of defense here from Isildur. Staunch indeed. We've seen a rifle nade, but we did just see a Gren go down there. LMG is left. Out okay, yeah. there. That nades, was a grenade. Nades, he teched grenades prepare. and he got yeah, a grenade yeah. off against the Grenadiers. Wiped it and the LMG is now pick up a ball. So that surprised everybody. Well played by Kimbo to tech grenades so late in the game. Big surprise elements. So good win for the yeah. pole there. A wiped very highly vetted Gren with LMG, but why aren't the Pioneers storming towards that LMG? <laughs> They'll get so much uh, experience gain from it, uh, shooting with that thing. But no, he's left. I don't think he's realized the LMG's dropped there. Oh, Airfield says they were used early. I didn't catch that, you know. Maybe it was on screen, but my mind was uh, too busy thinking of things to say. It does happen as a caster, but, but Kim regardless. Kimberly did good. He, he saved for double nades at the same second. So mm. Isidore had to choose which squad. Uh, That's you know, it. That'll be, so that was the surprise element, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Sherman's so those... looking for a northern flank here, Ed. Um, yep. yeah. And he's going to look for an angle. He's got more units joining. We've got still that Vet 3 M20 giving good spot sight lines and the M1s pushing in between. Yeah. So, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of good vision for both teams now. You've got the Vet 2, 2 2, 2 of Isidore versus the Pathfinders and the uh, Vet 3 M20, so props to Kimbo keeping that M20 alive and pumping in, into the 22nd minute here. Sherman gets a fadeaway shot there, Gren's forced away, doesn't want to uh, keep them on the field if they're not full health, but keep an eye on Osilda's victory points here, Ed. Is that, what has the LMG not been picked up for? But keep an eye on them. Um, 414, he's still got a triple cap engaged. Yeah, I do believe uh, Isidore's in the, he's just got it his way this game. He's perfectly um, just stood his ground against Kimbo. Kimbo got a very good first engagement off the, that we can remember up north, but then instantly kind of gave uh, the initiative back to Isidore with the second engagement. And that was crucial for Isidore to get back into his rhythm. And here he seems in full flow of playing the game how he wants to play it. And Kimbo is definitely dancing to his tune. Rifleman just was taken out there by stray shots on the retreat path. More are ready to take their place as the lieutenant pushes in. Rifleman join the fray. We've got the M1 watching on, but Pax finds the M20. <laughs> Some great shots there. Not taking any of Kimbo's shit right now, Isilda. He's a strong line is becoming an absolute wall for Kimbo to break himself upon. Yeah, and Kimbo, no reaction time there. So both pack guns waited until both could pretty much fire in quick succession of each other. So, yeah, couldn't even smoke unless he had god tier reactions and randomly the M20 selected at that time. So, yeah, good pick up there from Isildur. But uh, Kimbo, I feel, is going for the double pack now. But I feel the, the big decision to change this warfare was he, he could have gone straight for a faster Sherman map with his lieutenant. But instead, he backtacked for Captain to get an AT gun to be a bit Good safer. Good shots.
Good shots from the M1 there. Panzer IV reverses away. It was well provided for by the NR Pathfinders. Reconnaissance still alive. Vet 3. Not use the artillery once, so AE's idea was completely stupid. So don't listen to me, of course. And we've gone for a, a new Sherman. We're going to have to start rebuilding his forces, his Kimbo. His, I always feel with medium tanks as uh, allies, you kind of want to gain critical mass and keep building. Keep your tanks alive until you've got two or three other things. If you get your first one picked mm. off, it really puts you on the back foot in a big way. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you, though. Was, do you think that captain pick was necessary for Kimbo in this aggressive style? Do you think he could have hodled long enough to get a Sherman out against the first P4? Or do you think back backtacking for the captain and 80 I think a Sherman against a Panzer IV in two packs on this map, mate, you're asking for trouble. You can, And that's why I say, I'm not joking when I say you need indirect fire. Is if you don't just overwhelm your opponent's USF on this map or Longris mm. or Bacage or, or Crossing in the Woods, you're going to need indirect fire. It's as simple as that. You need indirect fire. We need three and three, two to three medium tanks with smoke pushing in in one big push. You cannot play a war of attrition with a mobile um, kind of force built for the early mid game. You can't think, do it against Fairmont. I think now if you're Kimbo, if you're thinking, right, how do we turn this around? He's got double AT guns, one of them's Vet 2, so that's all well and good. He's got a Stuart still, pop on away for infantry. Now I think he just gets a Jackson, sits pretty, until he has enough <laughs> uh, munitions for the butterfly baboomskis of doom, mm. and uh, drops them on the pack guns and goes absolute bananas and pushes in, whereas Isildur now does have skill planes available in four munitions time and a Tiger should he lose a P4. Oh, big fail of a push here. We've had multiple tanks struck by uh, pack shots and Panzer IV shots from Kimbo pushes on regardless. Rear Ashrams lead the assault. We've got pinned riflemen but no other ideas from Kimbo. It was a two-pronged assault and both prongs have been dulled and nullified by the Englishman. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a bludgeoning attacks here from Kimber. He's just trying to whittle down the arm of Isidore and eventually shank him. But uh, it's just it's a bit too crude, isn't it, for, for Isidore? Um, it's Kimbo's playstyle at the moment. I think Isidore's reading it well. I think the, the crucial decider now is going to be these Pathfinders, Matt. If you can get them on hold fire, chill them in a the bush, that's going to give you such vision for your AT guns. And the player that really brought that up to my attention was a Mirage Flower when he was testing that and man it can be devastating that unknown vision because unless you use the 2 to two ability you won't know the Pathfinders are there hidden on whole fire. Definitely that that's range. a good idea Ed let's see if he goes for that that would be very interesting indeed. We're gonna check his Sildas capping he has indeed got oh we got a push though to keep an eye on Lieutenant pushes in with the Stuart everything backs away it's just one of those probing Attack. So we're about to say we have Battle Phase 2 from Isilda, so he's certainly not going to stay with the Panzer Fours, it seems. Maybe a Panzer Werfer uh, would help out with these double AT guns, um, the M1s. That would really um, blunt Kimbo's assault. Yeah, no major as well to bring in that artillery. So he's, he's still got the Butterfly Bombs available. He could drop in a Paratrooper squad now with the pa Pack Howie, but uh, do you, I don't know what he's saving for, mate. He could easily buy a Jackson now. Bit of indecision for Kimbo here. Another Sherman's the choice for Kimbo. So he is going to get uh, a vital further medium tank. He's just, as I say, you've got two options. And one of the options is you need to build up a big force and all in. You can't go in piecemeal like we've seen a lot of. Mm. You're going to have to like just hold one victory point, hold one fuel, and build up your forces. Uh, and hope that you can get your rear echelons in. Spot for um, Teller mines, of course, of which I've not seen any yet. I think all the munitions so far no. have, have gone he's into a pick. For, <laughs> he's got skill planes available though, so yes. that's more useful for, for us. Or, or a global sprint for all this troops, which could uh, break the difference with, between getting a Faust off or not. You could do both with the amount of munitions he saved, quite frankly. Yeah. But uh, one interesting thing is, like last game again, we, we saw Isildur from Wait. the west. Sorry to interrupt, Ted. Yeah, I just no realised there is a, a tank that we never see in tournaments ever. And ever. There's a teller, by the way. We never see the Tiger tank anymore. How exciting would it be to see a Tiger tank in high-level Co2 once more after so many years? Oh, no, the <laughs> butterfly bombs don't even make it. Oh, they do! They do, and they land on the MG and the pack. There you go. Nice. D-Cruise there. D-Cruise City. 
by Kimber. We have a push in the north as well. He's smoking out the MG. We might not even see the Tiger because Kimbo has pulled the trigger. He's gone for a big push here. A bad man. <laughs> he started to believe. But uh, I think uh, here comes the Sherman's wrap around the corner whilst the AT gun still. Oh, oh two 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 Pack out, pack a, oh, uh, they've decrewed a pack 40 as well. Panzer IV watches on helplessly. Grens now have to run the gauntlet. Here's more smoke. Yeah, there's a few alarm bells ringing for um, Isidore here, but I don't think it's anything too much to worry about. Look at his resources. He's very near that uh, tiger as you mentioned but oh my god double p4 are gonna shred this pack down again yeah just had the Stuart die in the north slightly off camera as the pack 40 is not stolen Sherman's watching on trying to destroy the fallen support weapon now and in the maelstrom of aggression the captain's been able to take the northern fuel there's the uh, the dead tank there it's actually a Sherman that was the Sherman yeah, yeah the Stuart Sherman, died in the bad. south so Kimbo's lost okay. two vehicles and but uh, oh, it's gonna be a panther Aww. oh oh Cancel All the Christmas. Tiger fans have just table flipped right now. Just that everyone is. flip your tables. Come on, is the, come on, yeah. come on, son. I think no. To be fair, I think it's just a pop gap <laughs> issue. It's thing. a good decision in a competitive <laughs> computer game tournament, Ed. To be fair, he's trying we, to win we a little bit. We don't care. <laughs> we'll, we'll but no, I think uh, I think it's a pop cap issue. Ah, okay. He could he he couldn't have got the Tiger at the time that he clicked it, but now he could. But so yeah. he went for this Grenadier that's now got the LMG. Um, well, he lost a pack crew, which changed his uh, pop cap dynamic, and then, yeah. No, so it's just... going to be a pan for folks and two P4s. Uh, mm -hmm. He's only got one pack gun now to back it up, as opposed to Kimbo's still got two AT guns. Barely holding the north of the captain. So he lost uh, Stuart the and a Sherman in that push, yep. didn't he, Ed? Yeah, yeah, lost Well, both. Stuart died early. Just to, like, Did he? I'm just an idiot. Okay, I'm just an idiot. Yeah, okay, and then... Yeah. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll be completely admitting, distant. guys. I'll say this live on cast. I kind of uh, had an engagement party yesterday, and I got very drunk. So there's been elements of my brain that aren't fully with us today, but you can't blame my passion, which is certainly still there. And that's why I've got <laughs> Ed with me. Ed, Ed can understand what is going on. Ed actually gets what's happening on the screen. So he'll fill in the blanks if a his brain is not fully with us. Anyway, nice push in from Kimbo. We have... Gren's being forced away again. The Panthers' first action is to be, uh, you know, a thorn in Kimbo's side. Just showing his presence in the centre, at least. Yeah, Kimbo could get really caught out here from the south flank of uh, Isildur. But Isildur's so safe in his play. He's not, he's not going to push. He's just going to hold. And uh, two VPs are, are more than enough for him at the moment, it feels. But Panther is uh, it's going to be tough to take out, especially without a Jackson. Especially now with t another pack 40, while well, the third to be built, the second on the field, it's just giving such a high AT army and four LMG Grandies doing the heavy anti infantry lifting. It's a great army to have, Ed. It's got a little bit of everything. Yeah, and uh, again, we've seen recon support, but other than the one Pathfinder squad with one butterfly bombs, there was a couple of aid tactics used early, I suppose. But what does this auction give you super late game it's it's not too good as opposed to Isildur he's got this global sprint he's got the the threat of the skill planes as well as the tiger calling so I do you believe Isildur's uh, faction and doction pick shoot him better into the super late game Kimbo's amassing in the north but we've got multiple Wehrmacht detachments ready for him a panther to everything just look at that red line it doesn't matter, quite frankly, and Kimbo's now slipped to double-digit figures, 99 and dropping. And we're not talking about Lufbalon, we're talking about Kimbo's um, <laughs> main currency of survival. It has been to been able to stem the flow a bit. It hasn't been many triple caps uh, since the 20-odd minute mark, so Kimbo's been a bit well there, but oh no, Desperate needs to pick up that bazooka and retreat. How can he do it? Where's he in several thousand pieces? I don't think Kimbo well. has a chance in this game now, Ed. I think he's brain mm. AFK'd from caring, quite frankly. We're on a slow death march to uh, GG'sville. It's just as, you know, it's just 
it's what's happening, Ed. We can see. Yeah, it. We don't need to hide the inevitable. Overreaction because reactions were hella needed. The repairs, the bazooka threat, as well as the um, sweeping of tellers. Isidore could get some cheeky tellers down now, but probably be saving for skill planes instead. Sorry, I was the to get pack guns. Oh, the AT guns can't find an angle just yet. They're going to have to scoot around a corner for Kimbo. So that means the Panther, good angles there for Missador. you got to say, using the, the terrain perfectly to his advantage. Sun Tzu style. Indeed. And, uh, it makes for an excellent YouTube down. thumbnail as well, Ed, I feel. You know, Panther vs. <laughs> Sherman's in the snow. Quite beautiful. Was it a tactical feat, though? Because uh, for the first time in ages, Kimbo's finally got uh, two VPs. <laughs> wow. Okay, there you go. Just uh, distracting us all. Must have He's the building VPs. false confidence in his enemy. Oh, no, here we go. <laughs> Here comes the collapse of the map. Well, Jackson is usually a great pick if you're uh, in a good position as USF. Grenade tossed on the retreat path. Silda still suffers, but it could have been worse, I guess, if he'd actually Ooh. retreated into it. What's died there? The Panzer Fall just off screen. Wombo comboed there by the take aim ability of uh, the M1s. Yep. That was Fastest quick. Firing guns in the west. Bloody hell, that was too quick to catch on bloody camera. Sharpshooters of the AT variant. But uh, here we go as well. He needs to get that bazooka back. Another rear echelon squad. And we've got the Jackson. But we still have the Sherman up. So um, yeah, it's game back on. As, yeah, it feels so much more ebb and flow this game. Game one was a bit of a waffle stomp, so we're getting our, getting it. Well, the patrons are getting their money's worth in this game. I and think uh, Mill Road will be the map where this. Oh God, Gren's looking low. I tell you, never sleep on Kimbo as a player. Oh, never do it because all of a sudden through, something. Yeah. You might wake up, and you might not like what you see when he starts uh, bringing back his full capacity. Is that an INR Pathfinder? Yes, it is. It's a decoy barrage, though. All the packs buying it. Is the MG buying it? No. They saw the IRs. They bet it. They're betting that it's a decoy, Ed. Oh my! <laughs> Probably knew he had low munitions after the butterfly bombs earlier. So, ooh, either brave there from Vistador or no Fs given from him. <laughs> so, ooh, P say, Warfare is going to yeah. be the choice. For oh, that's a good choice. That's a good choice. So we get some indirect at last. Yeah. Pax and Panther set up Sherman. Has already been st stricken. The Jackson awaits. Yes, we've got two M1s. Yes. Will the Panzerwerfer be ready to spoil the party for a Silda? He could do with it being there. We've got a Faust threatening the Sherman. He needs to be careful. I think a Silda's just waiting for the Panzerwerfer to be on the field there. He doesn't want to push in mm. too much. It's going to be an all in from a Wombo combo style, as we mentioned earlier. But here we go again. P4 just defending the VP down south. He's got the packs and Panthers up north. Mids looking after itself with the MG42. Kimbo really needs a way to turn that MG42 offline and um, and start using his smokes a bit more uh, with the, the commando squads or the you know the commanding squads of the lieutenant and captain. He hasn't really utilised that too much. Could buy another rear echelon now to get one on the field, but he's just probably going to rely on the the crew repairs of USF. Which he's got to be very thankful for that he is USF <laughs> at the moment without any engineers. Kimbo, he is the Panzer IV repairing in the fog of war. He assembles the M1s and the Jackson, but can't get infantry there in time to spot for him, which is slightly unfortunate. Panzer Ver for now is roughly in the centre, so he can attack both north south if he requires to. Jackson gets a good shot on the Panzer IV there. Is there a follow up from Kimbo? He's definitely going to follow it up, but it's into oh. a double pack. The Panther, this is a dead M36. Surely. There we go. Oh, nice uh, Frostbury Aided flop there. Him. That was an excellent <laughs> high jump record by the United States uh, athletes. In chat holds Infastic. up their cards like a diving competition. <laughs> <laughs> M1's pushing. We got the uh, IR Pathfinders. Kimbo does not like seeing the Jackson. Wasn't appreciative of the athleticism of his tankers there. And pushes in. We've got the MG that's being surrounded. Oh, but here's the Panzer to spoil the party. It's on the retreat path of those infantry, but they don't fall for it. They push on. Yeah, a bit of a weird flex barrage there. Grenz could die, Kimbo Ed. ever going to back off. Yeah, this could be another wipe. The base MG's not helping out at all at this angle, so Kimbo pushing the map to his extremities. Great map knowledge and awareness there. And he Blocks another Gren. This is a uh, slightly wrong for Isidore if he didn't take out that Jackson. 
Oh, I know Pathfinder saved the life of that Gren there. They just dropped one of the Grenadiers at the exact right time. Yeah. Yeah, there's been a lot of close calls and suddenly the chicken's coming home to roost for Isidore and he's running out of that Lady Luck on his friend's retreat. So he builds another one into the queue to get <laughs> the magic three number of infantry squads back up. As uh, Kimbo still blapping away with a HE Sherman. He's, he's, doing well, he's doing well, Ed. He's doing well. He's outperforming Isildur right now. He may have lost a, f a lot of uh, tactical engagements, but overall his output as a human being is uh, very high. <laughs> he may, may be actually losing actual infantry and tanks and such on the battlefield, but he's really trying hard. He's grinding away now, and he's gotten a triple cap with 68 victory points remaining. And the pressure is actually on Isildur for a little while. With a bigger army, yes, but uh, without the mm. map control, no. I definitely can see a Sherman late game pushing around the top, going right around those top hedges and going for the P-Werfer. So yeah, Isildur's got to be on high guard now. He's still got double pack guns, he's consolidating his forces a lot more, which is how Oster, you know, maintain their strength. But, oh, here we go, Panther straight into double AT gun. With a Stuka as well, this Sherman's a very dead Sherman. Panther goes on, eats two M1 rounds, but absolutely tanks them. We do have a fresh Jackson, though, and the Panthas retreat through, through the M1s again. Will it get it? Will the Stuka save the day? Oh, so many shots hit the M1s there, very low on health. Who's winning the set? Come in and clutch there. P. Ruffer didn't decrew the AT gun, so Kimberly's going to try and win it with this brave push of his AT guns. I don't think it's on, but in Kimbo's mind, it's always on. <laughs> and it still pushes ahead. Could really punish the double pack crew here. But uh, yeah, the loss of the rear echelons means his armor is so hard to repair up. Jackson's going to push in. Skill planes are still flying around, but with no vision now. Oh, we had the butterfly game. bombs try and take out the MG there, but so unlucky for Masild not to decrew a single M1 with the Panzerwerfer. That thing only has yeah. three kills, and that was a very successful barrage in terms of placement. But Kimbo has defended, well, before I said it, of course, he had defended all three victory points for a while. Isilda yeah. doesn't care, it. He's not playing for victory points. Ooh. He wants to heal his units. He wants to finish Kimbo off whilst he has a bigger army size. And whilst he's been around 90 pop cap, of course, due to Company Heroes 2's uh, comeback mechanics, Kimbo has had more manpower per minute. He's gone from 50 pop cap now. He's built his army back to around 70 if uh, his vehicle crews... Um... Oh, no, around 70. Yeah, that's right. And if we go back to the, the War of Vision, which is so crucial in a uh, RTS, any RTS, uh, the Pathfinder is still alive and the, and the Vetted 2 to 2 is down, so it's vision advantage for Ooh. Kimbo. Is and he here going we hunting go, for the right down the north, like I, like I, I said know, earlier. Yeah. He wants that, but he knows it's not on. He's not full HP, so I think even for Kimbo's <laughs> optimism, he's got to take a bit of a reality check there. But two highly vetted M1 AT guns, Matt, these things are going to fire like so they fast, really it's going to be like a xylophone on that P4 armor. Rumbling that 3P4 thunder. though. Yeah, it's a good vehicle fast to fire, have. Right? 22 kills, the bloody thing. Vanilla Grenz out again. One kill. And uh, here comes the push. Rifle nade was faked. And no, it wasn't. It came in late though. <laughs> Riflemen <laughs> are um, pushing forward on their bellies, just trying to defend. These victory points as the Sherman fires from a fog. It's a good shot in there. Pack, pack returns fire, however. Yeah, and still no rear echelons. It could all come down to just eating a telemine or S minefields, and he's got no way of sweeping it. But Isildur's really um, locked into the idea of just spamming skill planes whenever he can get them. That is a big opportunity cost of how you use your munis, though. Now it's Kim Kimbo's turn to av avoid a VP. He ignores finishing cap in the mid VP into storm straight ahead Matt yeah he does and he All catches a Gren out he gets, catches a Gren out of position there we've had basically Kimbo is defending all of these small pushes big pans of earth barrels coming in is it big though where is it it's on the center which was very spread and very big crap. miss yeah <laughs> yeah big miss it's indeed. so painful that the spread that you compare that to any allied or because uh, Stuka had set the, so you can't compare it to that, but any allied uh, spread of their own direct seems so much better than the p -Werfers. You have line of sight, mate, and you dare bring your Panzerwerfer up closer. I think it's probably, uh, could be the best, but it's so situational. 
You have to get it up close. And you I'm have to shotgun that, that's it. You the know. thing is, you don't know whether it's going to be one of those <laughs> scalpel esque, you know, just wipe perfectly the crew, or it's just going to mildly. My favourite's the land the mattress because it just—it's so easy to use. And it just denies an area. If it doesn't hit anything, you can't go there for the next 20 seconds. So it's yeah. such a cheap way to get map control. Uh, but of yeah, course, Brits are never played. The main drawback of allies in direct uh, vehicles is that they're usually locked behind a, uh, a doctor like the collab. Oh, yeah, so true, so. so true. Sherman's going in, Eddie's got support as well. Jackson's M1s. Panthers found out there. Pax are reversing. Smoke's been popped. Good use by Kimbo there. But he withdraws. Has he kept victory points? So you've got to keep an eye on that. No. Good Faustin on the Jackson. Oh, the Telemine. Oh, was it Telemine? Of, of course it was. Curtains for that Jackson. Both the Packens are going to be chasing along now. I don't know why they're not moving up. They're, sh they're trying to shoot from beyond max range. They need to move up, surely. Jackson's no. going to survive there, Red. Oh, going to wow. survive. Close call there, like, from this sort of what to do, really. Whether to chase or to try the max, max uh, range attack round shots, but... Went for the latter, didn't work out for him, but has managed to grab a lot of VPs. Kimbo still, Kimbo's still without rear echelons, just eating telemines for breakfast, doesn't care. He's going to push on through, get more Shermans out, so double Sherman. Oh, tell Jackson. you what, this Panzer has gone a bit too far forward there. And once with some excellent shots, but the last one misses. Panzer Fall gets oh, out of there. We've had a Kimblob come through the center. And one last hit gets him. Panzer Werfer with a. This could be huge. This could be very large indeed. <laughs> Riflemen retreat in the very nick of time. That last few rockets did not catch them thanks to the retreat. Stricken Sherman goes in looking for the Panzer Werfer, but gets taken out by the low health oh, Panzer IV and the Pan well. Pack 40s that get a good shot oh. through. Oh, three what action. from that P4, so the vet 3 P4 just bounced three uh, shots there in that engagement. Isildur, wow. Take a bow, that P4 crew is uh, <laughs> getting Very some good nice, indeed. Some and it nice saved the day. After this. But Kimbo does not care. He'll push on with a smaller army. He just does not care. Sherman, the new one, goes forward. Gren's come back out. Panther's tracking him, though. Gets him through the frontal armor. Watch the VPs, though. Kimbo's capturing them yet again. Yeah, but two AT guns against double LMG Gren's not a good matchup. So he needs to screen with those Pathfinders. Jackson's back up. Did lose his vetted, really high vetted uh, HE Sherman blapper there, Dick Kimbo. And now more than ever, he should do the hold fire bar finder trick to get some vision on the tanks. I really think that could <laughs> light up the armor of uh, Isidore. Pushing in from the Grens to get capture the northern victory point. Good map sense there by Izzy. But we have Kimbo. He's coming to uh, offer some defense. Oh, I just can't believe how lucky that people is. Kimbo must feel hard done by by that. That that will stay in your head, that one, for a few minutes. So he just needs to calm down, reset. He's doing great on the VPs now, and that's what he needs to play out. Perhaps even a 50 cal mat, something like that, just to stop Grenz or Pioneers aimlessly being able to cap it's a VP. The, the manpower trap we talked about earlier, you know. Yeah. These American sport weapons are good, but with the manpower attrition, it's finding your moment to get them. He um, does have I, an MG42 though, so he stole one MG42. I didn't realize that in one of the big pushes, so I think that's a huge pickup for Kimbo there. Doesn't need to go with 50 cals, he gets the wider firing arc now of an MG42. And uh, yeah, that's huge for Kimbo actually. So it will help solidify one VP, then he can concentrate on the others as a Panzer worth of Barrage. Looks to take out these super vet uh, M1 crews. Both of them survive though. Be worth it doing what it does best of just not wiping squads, putting them so low. Jackson, I'm just having a little poke in there, but the packs were ready should they be needed. Three victory points in Kimbo's control yet again. What a, a defense this is from a seemingly unwinnable position, or at least I thought it was. And good shot there. We do see the MG42 get taken out, but the Jackson gets the Panzerful through the tree line, then gets a full frontal assault on it. Needs to keep reversing. Does this Panzer 4 
gets him from afar. No misses. A plume of smoke Double and miss. snow flies into the sky. Panther returns fire. Out of control, Sherman. Jackson next in its sights. Good counter assault by a silver. But Kimbo's continually keeping victory point control. Got Captain throwing smoke in. MG watching on. Grens get the point, however. But the captain's pushed back the past the MG so he's going to recreate that MG42 is converted upon hella unlucky again against the P4 that thing is just blessed don't even try and kill it it's just taking up all of Kimbo's resources at the moment I think go for something more high value like the Panther then oh because... good crush from the Panther Ooh. Captain found out in the open could finish finish him off with a hull gunner yeah, perhaps a... that's a close one there's a Gren on the retreat path Oh, but that's, that's probably easier to kill him with. There you go. Didn't even let him get past him. Shot him straight in the face. Rifleman come into the picture. Grens have done their duty for the Reich. But I tell you what, Isildur is now down to double-digit victory points as well. What has happened in this game too? This was such an easy game to kind of call for me. I was like, no way can Kimbo do this with his current build order. But Kimbo constantly belies expectations. He's made a company hero's career of doing so. Yep. Semi dodges the P worth a barrage in the mid, so he's going to get back on that VP. He's losing the VP in the north, though. It's just going to come down hella close to the victory point control now. As uh, Kimbo looks, he's, he's just been swimming in fuel the whole game. Both players have. It's just he's so desperate for that manpower, man. And losing that captain was, I think, a big blow to his um, captain potential here. Yeah. It was, but I tell you, he's now going to get the third victory point again. MG's out. We've got down to two Grenadiers now for Izzy. Oh gosh, he really was uh, relying on the four Grens as power creep to just kind of control. He's going north with two Panzer IVs, showing a little bit of desperation, I would say. Interestingly, looking for a flank perhaps on the Jackson. The M1s are reversing away. Can Kimbo they turn about face up in here. time? Yeah, he's <laughs> heard it. Sniffing it out, turning his AT guns. This is going to be a dead P4 before he even gets to sing a can song. The, uh, oh. Can the fateful Panzer IV still survive, though? They get past the M1s. Jackson's now in his sights. That Vet 3, heroic. Panzer IV could finish the job here. He's reloaded. He gets it out of control. He goes, will he escape? He can't keep getting away from this. Oh, yes, oh, he, he can. Does. He blinks. Oh, another bounce on the way out. That P4 yeah. is insane you. I don't Absolutely know how it's still is. alive. We've also got the Panther pushes in just to push units around now. Keep these um, these M1s guessing. We've got Grenz trying to shoot them down with the LMG from afar. Wait, no, the Panzer IV has been taken out. How, Ed? What's got on it there? I don't know, actually. Oh, an attack ground through the hedges from an AT gun. That was insane. Can't have been. God, the M M1 was facing the other it way. Did. We'll have to go in the replay to find that. I think he turned Panther's the, gone the into AT base in the meantime. Around. He's trying to gun the M1 down with the coaxial gunner. He's now re reinforcing. <laughs> That'll soak up your manpower, but it will be a big distraction but, but 20, in the time. 22 VPs, and he's... Oh, the MG42's having to face the wrong way. This could be hella, hella close here. 20 VPs. Oh, my. I think Kimbo just needs to ignore whatever the hell's going on with tanks in the game and just. Iron R Pathfinders are dead now. Vanilla Grens finished them off. Lieutenant gets it to the central capping circle. We have to check out the southern victory point situation where Grens are fighting for their very lives, their very existence. It's two victory points. They have to win this engagement. The riflemen need to die, but we have. Oh my god, what a choice. An M8 Greyhound! What a pick by Kimbo in the last seconds of the game. He pulls in the Greyhound and wins the game with it. What a shot. What a shot by Kimbo to pull on the uh, armored car there and finish the job. Isilda could have rescued this. He had a Gren going north. If this Gren had won the engagement, he would have won the game. But the Greyhound saves the day for the pole. He's now 2 0 up in this best of five. It was an epic game indeed. Bloody hell. I tell you, look, lads, casting that uh, was 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 tough. Close that man. was one of the highest level code games for a long time I've seen. Such a high level of action. And Kimbo was uh, 
Give, he's given a Silda a tough ask now. Don't forget, guys, if you get to the grand final unbeaten in this tournament, you pick the maps. That is the upper bracket mm. um, advantage. If you don't lose a life yeah. going to the grand final, you get an upper bracket advantage, you pick the maps. And Kimbo is uh, winning in this semi final. He's getting into a really good position to get himself that advantage. The thing with uh, Kimbo there was just utter defiance. Like, how far behind was he at one point on the VPs? I think it was like 400 odd to maybe 140. And then he just turned it around on its head. Isildur started looking like he didn't really ha have a plan of what he was going to do. Goes for the huge flank in the end with those P4s. We thought, again, the, the blessed P4s crew was going to win the day. But Kimbo just focused on the task at hand. Nothing else matters. If everything else is blowing up and dying in your base, whatever, who cares? Jump on those VPs. And my God, did the BARs and the and the squads of the USF earn their stripes there. And that was just probably one of the best games I've seen for, for a while. It was in these ridiculous. What a comeback for Kimbo. Well played to him. And well played to Isildur as well, putting on fantastic pressure in the mid-game, Matt. And uh, we were thinking of ways, like you were talking about pack hours, any other way. But uh, Kim, Kimbo just stuck to his guns and kept it simple. And uh, yeah, VPs all the way. Well played. Absolutely. It was, uh, it was a bloody uh, tough game to cast, especially with uh, a hangover. Poor Eddie boy's watching on Twitch because his game does not allow him to play custom maps at the moment, which is odd. And, and these two guys threw everything they had at each other in a three lane map. I'm actually going through the replay as we speak. I want to find how uh, how that bloody Panzer IV died. It may just be an M1 shot through the bushes, but... I thought it was a shot through the bushes and then the M1 quickly turned around to point towards the Panther in its base. Did but... it? Was it that simple? Because I thought the Panther was distracted. Yeah, barely to caught do that the... at that moment is so high level by Kimbo. If he did that, that's just awesome. You know, um, to do that. In, and whilst you're yeah. under pressure so much from the algae... I, I didn't know you... you... To be fair, maybe he he knew, but I didn't even know you could shoot through that much shrubbery because the bottom bush line looked too thick. Juicy yeah, thick it's, it's a well builder thing. Anyway, they, 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 you can make them shot blockers or not, basically, depending on ah, what the okay. map maker fancies. So it's like you can add shot blocker to it. And map makers these days don't tend to make any bushes on the map, in the center of the map, uh, blockable to shots from tanks anymore. Because it's high level stuff, isn't it? You know, and you want to see that kind of stuff. Um, just bases are the only ones that block shots these days. But yeah, I'll, I'll go go find out for certain. We, I know the players will probably be taking a little bit of a break now, I presume. Yeah, I see someone else has got the same issue as me about the map thing. I think it's a version thing. That's the only way I can think of it, because before the Virgin... The virgin? Ooh, uh, Freudian slip there. Um, uh -huh. The... Virgin Media on my mind, 50 quid every month for shite internet. But anyway, um, first world problems aside, I think it's a version thing to do with the 32-bit. Ever since it's been 32-bit, I haven't been able to get these maps working. But, you have uh, less book splats, don't you, when you actually do cast on a map where you can watch it's just yeah yeah if i if i could get the maps yeah well, the 64 so... bit beta the 64 bit change had so many unforeseen problems for a lot of people mm. you know it sounded so good on paper didn't it but uh not i think so uh, i think when uh, if or when uh it goes back to 64 bits as a as a whole thing and everything's just like we can watch uh live games again then correct because at the moment we can't watch uh, customs or something about the spectate features off on this version so hopefully in future times it gets a lot easier before well, like usually it comes in times of big sega tournaments they'll <laughs> they'll, they'll probably um get onto it faster then so, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, Ed, exactly yeah. mate yeah sega tournament um 2025 it'll be fixed in time for that <laughs> <laughs> ML5, get out of here. <laughs> Make do with your 32 here. bit. Not our problem, bro. Peasants. <laughs> so I think there's, other than Matt had a good idea, XAP Pi. Um, he said download the actual files and put them straight into your folder from a. Download them from what, Matt, did you say again? Uh, some um, you know somebody will put them in the Google Drive for you and then put them Google in Drive yeah so you could try it manually that way um, but it's strange because I've got like Feynmanville Winter and other weird maps 
that I had to get from the uh, workshop, but who knows? Well, it's uh, still a mystery at the moment. Lads, I'm going to go make a coffee. Um, it's still yeah, I'm going to get a drink after that one game for a three. Um, I will, will uh, quickly, we'll just have a quick replay of the closing uh, moments of the engagement of game two, if we can, uh, because there'll be five minutes delay. The players haven't started yet anyway, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.
Guys, I'll just show you this because I just think I'm trying to get you that bit where the thing dies again. But it's absolute insanity at this point that Kimbo is 68 victory points down versus 307. I mean, we'll watch on times eight speed until we get to the bit we missed. I just want to clarify exactly what happened when the uh, the Panzer IV pushed in because that was such a pivotal moment. That was when the game was won or lost, basically. Um, but look at this, 40 minutes in. Kimbo's got a smaller army, much smaller army, Ed. Um, but he kept he kept wiping Grens, though, and in the end that caught up with Visseldorn. <laughs> Couldn't keep the control, but that Vet 3 p format was... It was almost a joke how many times it bounced on its last it was. HP. I, I agree, mate. Yeah, it really was. Um, it really was. Wait till he's got... This is at times 8 speed, lads. There's not much left on the replay, don't worry. Um, but, uh, yeah. I mean, as quickly as our little legs will carry us. I think Kimbo keeping the two AT guns alive was the biggest pivotal moment because mm. at least it got rid of some of the P4s. And... Uh, it added as a a nuke sponge from the P-Wear for the <laughs> whole game. <laughs> is this the moment? No, this the moment what we're looking for is when the two Panzer Fours, there's not two yet. There's a big survival of the... That's what we're referring to. And then the Sherman comes in, he gets him. I mean, it's, it looks fairly easy now, even in times eight speed, what happened, but only because we know the what ha what's going to happen. So mm. fairly routine defense, I say, from a Silda, but good idea by Kimbo, just unfortunate in execution, I guess. And then we're waiting for the second Panzer IV. But all the while, I mean, that's repairing. He's only got two Grens. Two Grens are white whilst that was happening, seemingly, on the central victory yeah. point. So again, we take our camera elsewhere, distracted by the tanks. Always the tanks take central picture, Ed. But, <laughs> and the um, uh, P were for there not wiping the two AT guns. You see the HP of the AT guns. Oh. Yep. Loses his MG42, does Kimbo for briefly. Yeah. But uh, had it all this game. We're going to watch, obviously, on times one speed, the Panzer IV push in uh, the fatal moment. That'll be our replay, let's say. But, of course, Company Heroes 2 and Company Heroes, there's that crush attempt. Company Heroes uh, 1, yeah, here... it's all about times eight speed to get to where you want to go. It's why montage <laughs> well, is so Well, here comes the, the second P4, and this is when he pushed around the top, which was a nice flank and arc for Missledor. Good effort. Um, but uh, forgot about the VPs and, <laughs> yeah, punished for it. Certainly did. We've got sound again. Panzer Force looking for an angle here. This is the game's got a f not much time left at all. We go at times two speed. It is. We have a look game three, which is currently on delay. Players have just started playing, and we'll have to wait for five minutes to be up. Panzer Force coming from an angle here. So the first shots go in. Let's go back to one speed. As here come the Stukas. There's a good shot by the Jackson, the heroic Panzer Force that we will keep an eye on this time. Oh, gets the killing touch, now goes for the escape, but here comes the Panther to distract the M1s. A bounce there, so that was the P4 living on its last HP, bounced that last shell. Um, Panther now drives to the base, but the P4 stays on the flag, and Kimbo rotates, I think. Is, is yeah, there he is, there he is, being distracted, the gets one shot in. I just sat on the VP for vision. So he knows you also exactly got the uh, Sabot round off. It was the Sabot round that made it a one-shot kill, I think. So, yeah, the Panther goes in. And then, of course, you've got the heroic victory point battles. One man Grand forced away. Pathfinders come in against the MG42. Do they have... Uh... They don't have new munitions, but the... as I say, the MG is distracted. We've got two squads come down south. Panther, His meanwhile... is crucial of the MG looking the wrong way. Yeah, oh, absolutely. There's just so many little microcosm like uh, effects that built up the eventual uh, VP hold. And look at this, the uh, Grens as well were shooting the wrong way on the pin squad. In the mid there, so yeah. Imagine nice. if that Panther had been a Tiger. Imagine a well played Tiger behind two packs and a Panzer IV. He could have dominated the victory points, couldn't he? Well, you just start smashing squads and yeah, oh, true, when, USF, when USF can't. And uh, here it is, the winning moment, cap. guys. Let's get it. Oh, they're lovely <laughs> stuff. BA Baracus and his M20, the A team popping in that final kill, and the BAR rifle is still alive. What a heroic hold there from Kimbo. Certainly and, yeah. was. Complete one of the best comebacks I think we've seen. I, I do Massive. remember one game with Asian Mint, I think, and versus Dev on yeah, Amelie Fields. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah, like one of those. This one or or the 
um, or that Asian Mint one. Probably the best games in Master League I've seen. But <laughs> fair play to Kimbo to, to constantly believing. I think Matt was a bit guilty of giving up on him. I I was. A bit I think like, that oh, makes for good good entertainment bad. though. When yeah, when yeah, I yeah. give up on yeah, a player. Yeah. That means come, the, a lot of fans are like, okay, it. here comes the comeback. <laughs> so I think uh, fair play for Kimberly's resolve there. He was very stout-hearted in that in that defense. But um, Isidore, you got to kind of question the Panther over the Tiger. But uh, other than that, he he kind of played the his his version of like perfect game perfect builds had double p4 right at the end there as well um kept getting lucky with a few grenadiers getting home safely when perhaps could have been wiped yeah but uh yeah took out the rear the rear rear echelons when kimberly brain afk the rear echelons i think that's when you when you thought he was out of it matt and yeah most people would say yeah this is an austere game now we do have uh, sorry to interrupt Edward your yeah, amazing yeah. analysis but we do have game three starting as we speak and ah, good stuff. let's keep, see I want to keep on with it one. in honour yeah. of my cough which I have been tested it isn't but let's just roll it anyway here we go <laughs> isolation has you feeling blue there's only one thing left to do the patch is out let's play co 2 it's the Corona Cup There we go. We're we're two nil down now. Hasilda is in a best of five. He wants to just own this scene, Ed. He wants to reign over Middle Earth. But uh, he has somebody <laughs> that's causing a bit of a stink up in Mordor. <laughs> Kimbo is the Dark Lord from Poland playing as the OKW. That's hype, Ed. I mean, come on. Playing as the OKW with elite armoured doctrine. Let's go. <laughs> the little goblin with his axe is going to hack down <laughs> all of Isildur's forestry and keep the fires burning for Mordor. But Kimbo finds himself 2-0 up in this series. As you can see there on the score, it is a best of five. So it's the last life for Isildur's first life in the tournament. He will be knocked down to a lower bracket, somewhere like that. That's right. He'll be knocked down to the lower brackets and he'll be fighting for his life against some of the fantastic competitors playing for you today on other streams. Mm. Um, you got, you know, Devon, Baolian, Quirits, um, Orange Pest, um, Creative Name, some 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 excellent names out there. It's still just going to have to go up against them in, um, you know, a fight or flight scenario. Kimbo gets to carry on, possibly with uh, all of his lives and the possibility of picking the maps in the grand final. What a great prize for being unbeaten. Stone Pioneers push the uh, combat engineers away here. Early going in Mill Road. Yeah, I really like the OKW pick for this map. It's a nice fluid attacking kind of map as Mill Road. Accessible cutoff points and uh, Kim Kimbo really <laughs> making the most of this site blocker as well and shot blocker with the Stone Pioneers. That is very good work there. It's one big shrub to rule oh, them all. But one man dies in the shrub there. Conscripts don't care about your shrubbery. They are the knights that say knee. In this case, they are <laughs> retreating bravely. Bravely running away. Just like Sir Robin. Yeah, and they're going to get a nice cheeky decap of the fuel if these engineers can't get there soon enough. But Kimbo having to back up a lot with the Volks is very late on his third Volk build. Like weird is. flex, I think, because he was um, micro in the stone by so much, he just, <laughs> he just yeah, didn't get time to to select them in. But you here they go. You have to consider it as well. You have to consider that. Uh, oh, nice shots by the conscripts on retreat there. You have to consider that Kimbo is on cooldown right now. He just exerted himself so much to win game two. He played out of his mind. It was awesome. So much intensity in order to make that comeback happen. Mm. Um, so now we could expect a little bit of possible, uh, as you saw there, manpower floating with the folks around here. A few little tells that he's going to be a bit on cooldown. But similarly, Isildur must have ripped his own face off in rage after losing last game in the manner that he did because it was in the bag and he, he blew it. He blew it, kid. He had it on. He blew it. As the South Park meme goes, and 
I don't know. I don't, it, whose psyche's going to be better? Like Kimbo, who's probably a bit tired from such an effort of last game, like you say, Matt, or Isildur just having to recover from that mega lol t tilt. Oh, big fan of the dark side. I think Isildur should use his hate, use his anger, and take vengeance. <laughs> you know, just go full on Sith Lord, and uh, and that's his best chance. He got a forever engagement in the south. We don't need to keep an eye on that, but we do need to keep an eye on these flanking conscripts, which could turn it ugly. You can see an early 2 2 1 from Kimbo, so full uh, Duffman TM build <laughs> here in a 1v1, so quite oh, nice. Back. A bit of diversity. Back forwards, there we go. Yeah, I love a bit of diversity gaming. It's always good to see. But that's the kind of diversity we get in um, Company Heroes 2. It's not, uh, you know, female partisans with um, a cyborg limbs like in that Battlefield trailer these days. It's a uh, armoured cause of uh, an evil regime from the Second World War. It's, it's very different diversity. <laughs> yeah, how, how can we get 12 year olds to stop playing Fortnite and play World War II? Hmm. <laughs> More scout cars. Look at these. They have smiley faces on. Kids love smiley faces. <laughs> Don't they? Yeah. Brum was big in the 70s. <laughs> cars, <laughs> Pixar's two, cars. Edition. <laughs> <laughs> Pixar's cars, exactly. Just need to rebrand every uh, every tank. Get some skins. Cars related skins. Anyway, back to the Elite Esports Mega event that we're casting, bro. <laughs> Scout cars just pitched up now. Let's get an eye what he sees. He sees the emerging conscripts. Scouts some Starcraft style. Yeah, this 2 2 1 can just sit down on the shots and really bleed these conscripts dry as they come out of the base. Nice early flamethrower pickup though from Insuldor. He went double combat pioneers instead of four cons again. This cost him huge in game one against Austria, but it's a bit more forgiving against OKW. As once you bully the Sternpires, the model, they basically have to run back home. So, yep. What about that shoe mine from the Sternpires? So they bullied, but they had a little trap up their sleeve. Oh, could have merged. Could have gone for the sick merge, view, but mm, didn't. Indeed. So, minor misplay there for Missador. Uh, and the 2 to 1, like a shark just looming in the dark waters, can sniff out these units at long range. Get sniping with that uh, LMG. 2 to 1 watches on as the folks are going to retreat. One or two retreats now for um, Kimbo. Might allow us to back into this early game in terms of control. Because he, uh, as I say, Kimbo's had a very good amount of it. Two fuel points for a while. Yeah, but a nice Molotov and 18-8 all in one now. As these could go down if, yeah, if he stayed around a bit too long near the <laughs> fire there. I, with the retreat path as well. I understand he had the SCGs and wants to push it, but good hold there for Misseldorp. Just little micro-engagements like that across the field really do make a lot of difference here in the early game folks this is i really the do but the basically what ed is saying is if you let your units stay on fire it is bad for them <laughs> very hot, bad hot, for them bad. indeed <laughs> hot, hot, no get out of no. hot hot <laughs> but uh like the, ma like the main an angry thing german with... father indeed we have the m42 <laughs> out now to put a stop to this 221 shenanigans with its upgraded rad or fug 12 radio set rather that's uh, apparently, by the way, I think it yeah. might have been his uh, military history visualized said that a lot of German crew members got cancer from using these uh, big radio antennas around oh, them somehow. So, like rudimental early vibes, yeah. Yeah, early vibrations indeed. I mean, you can't have too much sympathy yeah. for the Nazi German army, but you can in that case. I mean, that's pretty sad. <laughs> I think one thing we can all agree on is that's that's not good, right? Anyway, MG34 now Back up for Kimbo. Questionable commentary. <laughs> questionable commentary aside, not a very questionable flank. Very good indeed. Oorah and Flamethrower down. Stern Pioneer pushes in. Yeah, MG34 caught off guard there. Didn't need to be so far up round a blind, blind bend from Kimbo. Nice shot from the M42, 221 pushes on, but we have Sturm Gewehr, Volksgrenadiers flanking as well. Constant pressure on this cutoff. Meanwhile, we do have an engagement up here, Volksgrenadiers forced away. Keep an eye on this cutoff though, because here come the boys. Do you think psychology-wise, do you think uh, Isidore's already thinking of VPs and you'll be, be counting them like a madman at the top, just keeping an eye on it because of last game and how it went? 
He's fighting for his life, Ed. He's Scarlet, fighting for Scarlet anything he can mine. find right now. A, a bottle. Mm. He's going to break it on the bar. He's going to get nasty. He's going to get dirty. It's going to be like one of those family arguments where you, you <laughs> go over lines and you say stuff from 20 years ago that nobody ever speaks of ever again. Asilda needs to dredge. Needs to dig low. Needs to get this kill with the M42 but can't make it. Good smoke pop there. Oh, makes it! What a shot! Oh, lovely stuff by Asilda. That's the kind of thing he needs, Ed. Yeah, but a bit of a extra Shakira, Shakira wiggle of the hips there from Kimber. He's like, can't catch me, greased up death man style. <laughs> I don't know why he's stuck around there. So, yeah, maybe a bit of tiredness from that uh, mega effort he exerted in game two, Matt, like you said earlier. Yeah, you can have a second wind, and uh, Isilda's going to need an absolute hurricane right now to overcome Kimbo's fortress. That fortress is 2 nil up in this series. Ed, I think the fat coffee's finally gotten to me. My hangover woes <laughs> game back. one and two. Feel, back. I'm back. I'm back. Well, it's like a cast. This game's not going to be anywhere near as good as game this two. This game oh, one well. for Matt, but game three for everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We're looking good. We're looking good, lads. If you're wondering where the Nagano Love Nest series is at, that's going to be on Sunday cast uh, by Dutchman and myself. Ed, we, we deployed Ed on the Kimbo series. We thought he'd be best utilised uh, fanboy casting. Kimbo fanboy for life. As we see, the <laughs> stone power's not getting rid of their minesweeper this is going to smack the combat pioneers in the face with it on the way back but uh, getting that all in vital VP decap there's that 2-2-1 I mean somebody said it was a baby vehicle uh, but its demise has left to an led to an awful lot of capping it has to be said T-70's now out having a little perusal let's uh, go cinematic mode here and see if we can see its intended targets there they are lovely stuff yeah, much earlier T70 this time than in game one for Isildur. Uh, but look at what's up against it. Nova Ketten, nothing. <laughs> Kimbo's built that truck and unbuilt it two times already. Finally, he's going to lock in the Ketten and bite the bullet. He needs a, a proper counter to this T70. This is going to terrorize his um, Fox Grenadier otherwise. T70 getting a little uh, fadeaway shot onto the foot. He keeps hitting the sandbags there, so they're well protected. Sternpine is trying to cut, uh, do a cheeky mine, but he's been seen, so you might as well cancel. Oh no. This this is where Sternpire is. Go bye bye. <laughs> could be, could be flames. T70. Retreat. Look at that retreat path as well. And he put away his sweeper before he went home. If there was a mine on the retreat path, that would have been ten times worth. But the T70, oh, a bit awkward in its angles there, so it couldn't really punish that greedy play from Kimbo there. He knew that T70 was lurking there for a long time in advance, but uh, risked it, got away with it, and here comes the Raketten to try and put that little little tank in uh, in its place. Tell you what, if that was the old T70, the one that was one shot, one kill, that would have been a, a follow back wide. to base yeah. all the time. But uh... mm, true. But no, uh, no upgraded Schwer or no even Schwer built yet for uh, Kimbo. So he's been very delayed on that front, yeah. despite Schwer. having good fuel. The, uh, the Panzer Schlepper trucks coming out. Let's see if it's going to be the Schwer Panzer headquarters. You'd hope so. It'd be the logical choice. Of course, planted in the base as conservatively as all players tend to plant them. Or he gets the off-meta late-game Puma now. Let's go with heat shells. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not a bad shout, actually. Heat shells but are you need for Puma. you need Panzer HQ for Sturm Tiger now. So again, OKW cucked by this. <laughs> a lot of it's teching. The Captain Perfect gets a shot off on the T70. That'll keep it out of the picture for a while. But Dushka, second Dushka, should I say? is coming out for um, a cylinder. So he's going to get a techno, Euro techno party um, set up with a dush, 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 dush. Add it to go again, Matt. <laughs> Something like that, mate. You'll hear it. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, that. But the, uh, the Schwerpans is still not deployed. I think it was just trying to think whether he's going to go full Porkins or not. No, it's going to be on his base cutoff point. So it's outside the base map. That is a killable swear. Oh, it is. It's, is it worth it? I'm not even sure it's worth it. The, the risk reward. Sus. It's so nice the first time it does something, you know, but it just becomes a big target on your back. This is where OKW really struggled now. They have no pooper guns, which is the 
leagues. Um, and you've got concepts now that can just build green cover all over the map. Double Dushka backing them up with, with double flamethrower. It doesn't even have a sweeper. That is a slap in the face of Kimbo's Mines efforts. Wow. So no sweeper for Mistledore. And uh, Kimberly's got to deal with all these cons in green cover now. Uh, this is this is a problematic time for OKW. Till they can rush towards. Well, you're saying that, that, Ed. I, I don't disagree, by the way, with your sentiment. But you're saying that, but Kimbo's map control has still been so overwhelming for a Silda. Uh, you know, I, I can see what you're saying. The strategic build order of a is starting to pile up now. So we're starting to see, um, you know, four support weapons. We've got the double um, flamethrower engineers. Just saying, basically, I hope to wipe more of your manpower than uh, your mines will wipe of mine. It's a trade-off there, but uh, that's what the hope is, at least. Yes, the Paketan's not going to be able to get a shot off because of the good work there from the T-70. MG-34 does need to pull back. It's getting quite lucky with these shots. Not uh, getting blapped from the T-70 there. Old Rutra in chat says the Sturm Tiger rush is on. I mean, yeah, we have to hope, we have to believe it is possible. Yeah, could not even bother with a P4, but with an early P4 on this commander, he does get the uh, commander of Binos upgrade, which is which is a great ploy for OKW. Can call in artillery, push back um, field guns as you push him. So. Watch out for that one as well. He has, the, he has the fuel for P4 now, but he isn't he isn't picking it, so he could go full meme with a Sturm Tiger rush, but that no, he doesn't. He's expecting Isildur's skill and uh poise Talking here about full meme in the north there. We had a Dushka facing the bush, hoping the first radio would come out, but the Sturm Pioneers pop out in instead. T70 takes this moment now to push in and Kimbo knows that he gets out of there. Good pres preservation by the pole. Yeah, Not so early preservation by a Silder oh. in the south running into the flames, and the Panzer IV is now on its way, as as Ed Wright literally mentioned. The fiery death dance on the bottom VP there, both both throwing uh, Molotovs and equivalents. So, yeah, some good engagements here across the board from both players. We do see the mahusive GG Mortar available for Isildur should he choose to go <laughs> it, which could be hilarious. An absolute wipe cannon. But uh, I think he's going to be saving, going as quick as he can towards the T-34 to, to help stem the flow of this P-4. A little bit of surveillance by Kimbo there, going into recon mode of course, giving him nice sight lines of this MG, allowing, uh, ah, trying to find an angle there on the MG-34 and he finds it, he's going to force away the machine and Gewehr. Well, if a one neuron bonger like me has realised he's got double flame and no sweeper, I'm sure Kim Kimbo has, and he's got quite a lot of munitions, Matt, so that's Kimbo really planting those mines a lot right now. Panzer IV's finding inroads on the T-70, both M42's turn about to face him. We have had an 18 aid in as well, but they're, they're plinking harmlessly away. They need to attain Veteran C2. Yeah, people not helping out as well with its fire and goes for the MG upgrade rather than the commander. Yeah. Interesting choice there from Kimbo. We've had a good flank by the French Grenadines, but an even better defense by Isilda there with the Dushka turning about to face another mine detonates there. And French Grenadiers are forced away. Meanwhile, in the south, looks like the Dushka's gonna push in there. A double conscript push in. So Isilda's been building up his army yet, and yep. he's now coming into eminence. I think a second MG, or at least a league for Kimbo's, what well, required or oh, just an amazing black from the P4 as it takes out three cons model in one hit. No problemo. As uh, Kimbo's Stampire is traditionally just going to be overworked, I think he could even back tech to get the uh, mechanized to help with the fixy fixy and whilst he can go on sweeping missions with his Stampires. Combat Engineers come out to uh, defend the T-70 and repair it, get it back to full health. And we do have our first tank out for Isilda. It is, of course, going to be the 76mm Sherman. And it's got to be used very well with the, the rocket runs. No, it can't be rocket runs. 
Ta oh, anti-tank Overwatch, of course. I was going to ask you, why is in. the IOT same, there, but... same answer. It's just this buggy 32-bit. I don't think um, they're going to... Yeah, so IOTs won't be involved, but instead, <laughs> hellacious bombs until... If you, if you get snared inside that <laughs> stuff, it's game over, no matter what vehicle. So even if Kimber goes for the old KT and Commander upgrade, it's still susceptible to that uh, anti-tank Overwatch. Hella strong ability. Look at this double building mines everywhere. That's a really good idea because, of course, they build twice as fast and you can just get them down more quickly and it evades the enemy seeing them. So, I actually, there's some schools of thought that might say it's easier to get more mines down if you double build because, um, mm. you know, you can do it just do it in areas where you're not to be expected. If you're spanning out with them, you might get spotted more easily, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And you're not as exposed as long. You take extra damage whilst building any kind of defenses or structures. So, Good yeah, I can see it's I can see it's uh, proficiency. There's the P4 vet one up, still sniping away models, but seven man cons, not really too too fast about it. They retreat back, and not much manpower traded there. As Isidore does have a T34 now, so he can finally front up against the P4 threat, but. Kimbo's answered in tow with double the Ketten. Nice work with the um, T70 backed up by M42s. Panzer 4 comes in the rear side of the T34. We are Shots in there. Blinks away on the frontal armour. Meanwhile, Foch Grandier is in the south. Panzer IV is chilling. Ed, how are you seeing this one unfolding? What's your bigger vision here? I'm is seeing it really good VP hold from Kimbo early game. So if it's anything like last game, does this sort of come swinging back and take it from under his nose? Super late game. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm impressed with Kimbo's VP hold of the south VP. It's uh, notoriously quite tricky to hold. <laughs> against double Dushka and this many conscripts but he's doing a damn good job of it on Mill Road here with the ag more aggressive faction of OKW and speaking of aggression this is oh Raquette and Ver for aggression indeed in. two shots in on the T70 there really good work but no kill T70 s sneaks away on recon mode hold fire yeah gets away and a lot now, of pressure uh, being applied by Kimbo. He's kept those two victory points, don't forget. He's gotten oof. a Silda down to 240 or dropping now. And look mm. at Silda's army. It's all the way pegged back at the moment. He's got to get the repairs in. But with a double vet combat engineers, that should be relatively quick. The p 4s is doing a lot of work for um, Kimbo. I mean, a lot of people just rush towards that P4 and then don't really get too much value out of it. They hit a mine, it has to get repaired up, blah, blah, blah. But no, Kimbo instead is... Let's just see how many kills, sorry, the P4's got. 13, unlucky for some in these cons at the moment. It has indeed, but That's yeah. done work. Let's check the overall stats, by the way. I, I do want to draw everybody's attention to a, a folks who idea did die during that push. Um, but overall, uh, KD isn't... It's pretty bad, actually, for Kimbo, but he's trading men for map control. I don't know how he does it, quite frankly, Ed. It's really good stuff by him. Also, uh, negative still... KD against Soviets, which are traditionally, with conscripts, would lose far more exactly. troops. But how conscripts are now in, well, let's say, the last year of this game, they are actually the, the, the tanky, the durable squads. And it's the Volks that have to watch out, I think, because once you lose a, vet, a really high vetted Volk, it's so much harder to replace than a conscript that can instantly get a 7 mine up there. Certainly is, and of course we saw on the army value graph, Isilda is ahead, but victory points are the win condition. You know, army size gets you there, but if you, unless you get those flags, what's the point? Yeah, we could have a bit of pick and mix as well, because we've got another P4, so another chance that we get the uh, the commander upgrade instead of the MGs, but we'll see how, how uh, Kimbo's feeling. Right, then we've got a second T-34-76 out. His munition count's rather low, though. Of course, he needs uh, lots to get the anti-tank overwatch. <laughs> I can't trust the UI, and I haven't memorized every stat. I usually rely on the UI to help me whilst I cast. But anyway, first grenadiers. Oh, big loss coming in here for the first grenadiers. Misses, however. Goes past the Rakette and Verfa. And the four comes to clear up. Really far out, but... P4 going to try and counter hold. He popped the extra damage shells. Oh, if they have a Kedden lives. 
Ooh, Ooh, another Panzer IV trying again. to join the party. Do we see an AT nade? No, he's already tried that one. When it had full health, did no, not enough um, damage to get the engine crit. Very fortunate here for Kimber to get out of all that love. He's done well holding the south, but everything up north has been problematic for him. And Nisseldor's really trading well up there, but as the VPs still tick down, Kimbo's keeping the lead on that front. And that's all that matters. The dog's helping us cast this one. Somebody's knocking <laughs> on the door. They should know that, uh, of course, Company of Heroes casting comes first. Yeah, even the canine getting a good word in. Because let's let's face it, everyone and their dog wants to watch this game. Game two they is really an absolute do. thriller. Game three's poise. Well, t a couple of tanks each for both players. Right, as we've got to stand off there, Ed. Sorry, just keep talking about the yeah, game yeah. for a set, mate. No worries. And as, <laughs> as the game gets paused uh, for some doggy love, so Matt has to sort out. But we see a third T-34 locked in for Isidore. This is going to be an absolute battle of Kursk on Mill Road here. And I don't know if Kimbo can hold off against three T-34s. Double the Kettens. He hasn't got many mines up. Yeah. Although he's got Wampa VP lead, it's still going to be tricky. Going to be very tricky indeed, Ed. I completely it's concur too, with too all too. of your points. <laughs> that standoff now leads to just a small passage in time. First grenadiers have to get out of there. Hightail it back to base. Yeah, Wise discernment says Ricky in chat, Rifle. by the way. Yep. Yeah, uh, this map is epic. It's one of the best. One of the very best because Ricky Rifle had a good idea and the community helped him cement that idea. A lot of map testing, a lot of community participation and a, and a good guy at the centre of it all. And we're now left with a fantastic map. Yeah, Rick uh, prides himself on being the new Rick TV map maker after the Lord Trick has uh, retired from oh, he's... a lot of Code 2 map making. And, has he grown yeah. a beard, has he? <laughs> yes. It's going, um, seems to be going that way, but... Uh, Schwer's now been tired. uncovered, by the way. Conscripts just got shot for the first time by the Schwer, so it's, its orientation has been revealed. T34, the three of them now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's three of them, exactly. Say, so he's getting gardens. critical mass. He's it's getting critical mass. And I'm not talking about me and Ed after Christmas. I'm talking about <laughs> Isilda's capability of an all-in push. Three medi medium tanks of this vein. That is the magic number. Shermans, T34s, you want three. Because... Uh, it, you know, you can just push in. You can get the killing blows. Not if you expose your rear, though. He's got to push in now and do something with this, or at least escape the Faust. Still working on that beach ball, please, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but it, here we go. Snared up T34. Can you blink away? But it's, it's got a very low HP P4. And if these eight baby AT guns connect. Oh, oh, he's ramming him as well. He's ramming him to get the M42s in action. Crew shot leads to the death. Of one Panzer trading very well as a Silda here. He's got the third T-34 coming in as well. Rear armor penetrated. Panzer Force trying to get out of there. What a push by the Englishman. Playing as the Soviets. But misses. Panzer Force is going to ram him to take him out. He connects and destroys both medium tanks of the OKW army. A Silda is not going down without a fight. Yep, yeah, and there lied the big threat for Kimbo. Three T-34s without any mines. And big forward push from him, which uh, just a half, less than half HP people pushing forwards there. So, a bit too brave there from Kimbo. And uh, Isidore picking it's sentry up the spoils. The, <laughs> it's sentry <laughs> on the stricken T-34. Kimbo's playing for style now, playing for silliness. He knows that Isilda just really gave him a tough telling off, saying, hang on, uh, you know, you can't just wreck me. I'm reigning world champion, goddammit. Meanwhile, we have had a Faust in against one T-34. Raketenwerf is in a good position. A lot of kills on the vehicle. Oh, going for the T-34 instead of the damaged... Sorry, going for the T-70 instead of the damaged T-34. That could cost Kimbo a lot of time. Okay, oh. he's gotten behind the hedgerow. Where's the munitions at for Kimbo? He needs a lot more. He needs to get to 25. He's only on 17 at the moment. He has managed to um, get rid of the pioneers. Ah, oh, Schwer could take him out here. Schwer gets the kill. Raketenwerfer not needed, but we had another Volkswagen die in the meantime. 
M42 yeah. is exposed though. You could take Looking that. Looking very rough for Kimbo here. Triple cap now going back the other way. There's so many damage T34s, but it doesn't matter. Isildur can pump them out. He can lose a T34 every two minutes and not even care as long as he uh, deletes the rest of Kimbo's squads. It's it's game and double the Kedden. At least they're vetting up on stationary T34s. <laughs> well. So they will be vetted, but um, oh, it's well, let's check it's the like graph, a turkey shoot. T34s Army up, value graph. Isilda traded well there. Invest in Isilda because, uh, yeah, it's, it's looking good for his stocks and shares at the moment. He's traded wisely. He's looking good. And he got to that critical mass and he used it to his advantage. Well played. Yeah, G so... Dottis, who usually makes excellent points in chat, says, A silver's like a boxer you can't touch. Well, in this case, this boxer's already been to the infirmary. He's had his face stitched back together. You know, <laughs> we've had to do PR stunts to make him believable again. <laughs> Say he's been training for the, you know, Some after game one or two. Subtle GCOM, subtle GCOM coming in. <laughs> but uh, no, I think, uh, yeah, if you've just joined us in game three, you think, all right, another Isildur. Uh, procession <laughs> like Lewis Hamilton in the F1 at the moment just wins after wins rather than uh, the first two games guys Kimbo won in crazy fashion the first one absolute ruffle stomp 11 minute and then the second one probably the best comeback of the series so well and truly check that out on YouTube later if you've missed it but here in game three it's still anybody's game Matt Kimbo does have a lot of VPs to fall back on which is the most valuable thing in life time and with that time it's now He's got another P4. It's only one T34 still up for the door, so we're kind of back to square one <laughs> again, but with less Volks now. <laughs> Look at this! He's got an ambush T34 hiding under the bridge like a troll. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Gotta pay that troll toll. You come to my road. <laughs> oh, do you watch uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Oh, I've heard of it. Not, not. Seen that's it, where no. that's from. The the troll talk. Never mind. Never mind. Ah, okay, okay. Panzer, you just know the memes. You're just a master of memes. Oh heard, god, the yeah. Dushka's in in a very derelict house here. He's gonna be evicted. Oh, <laughs> One HP is all you need, and they get out just in the nick of what time. What a shot by the tank as well on the conscripts, cowering behind the fallen T34. There. Is that, I don't think it's 18 aidable, is it? It's not gonna get a damaged engine. Surely he's gonna hide, like a. Uh, woman in the pond distributing swords. It's no basis for a, a system of government. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, those those ponds, fun fact, are all red cover as well. Any water in this game is red cover, so you've got to watch out on those retreating paths. Well, Speaking of which... He does get the off. He does yeah. get it. And there's, there's a Volk that's oh, overstayed as welcome, but it did cap the North EP just to stem the bleed of the triple cap for a second. Oh, oh, oh that's a stern pile time. goes down. Well, T70 comes in with his super fast Nashes, and I think that's game. Kimbo's given up on game three. He's going to save himself for game four. Well played from Missledor. Great comeback with all the T34 horde there. GG. Guys, please stop trying to say that that RAM is overpowered. I am sick of everything getting nerfed in this game. What do you guys want? <laughs> just like a uh, nerf game where, where we're just playing with nerf foam bullets. Bullets have been declared overpowered. They're too lethal, Ed. They're too fun. We're now just going to have smoke rounds on all tanks and <laughs> nothing will explode ever You're gonna again. You're going to be able to attack with nice compliments <laughs> to your opponent. And uh, mentioning how lovely their gardening flowers are. <laughs> you have some OP bullshit, lads. You can't get rid of all of it. G Dotter with an excellent point. He won because of unit preservation. I'm going to go with that. It was, uh, you can't just get rid of absolutely everything in the game. That's cool. Um, well, he, he utilised the strength of Soviets. That They have cheap units and they're mass producible. Just like what happened in back in the day. So I think uh, Kimbo got a bit overzealous with a P4 on half HP and punished big time. So well played to Sildor there. 
major what are you, what are you League, one, about that? one of the newest majors of the Master League RES Rachel says you send your smartest person to the mid VP to debate whoever wins gets the VP there you go <laughs> <laughs> that's how it should all be declared from now on <laughs> auto match debates <laughs> you, you'd be rank one in that Matt <laughs> I'm only I'm only good at debating in systems where I've created a power creep over the past eight years, like the tournament system. Six, for, six uh, pints in and for order match <laughs> it's, it's a fair playing ground, mate. I'm no good. <laughs> it's oh, it's somewhere where it I've got the Patreon, and that's that's fine. I can debate all day. You know, it's great. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think co2.org's for that one. <laughs> That'll cover you. Big shout out to Armin uh, DLL. A big, big help to my personal life recently, and the game will only truly be balanced when every gun shoots confetti. I stand, by, I like the, love the guys in the balance team. By the way, I'm not ragging on them. I just, it's not just been them; it's their predecessors as well. All the community balance guys have just been like, right, what shall we nerf in a very small but meaningful way this week? And it's been like that for about four or five years now. And although I agree the game is better, it's also marginally less crazy. And as a caster, mm. I rely on that craziness. <laughs> you know. The the only nerf I ever cared about, well, not a nerf, but a change, was the um, stormtroopers of Oste getting MP40s instead of STGs. You're like, oh, <laughs> you know, so like, oh, it just became like, okay, everything's like trying to be the same rather than having just a really yeah. unique unit it was cool and a bundle made of the stormtroopers rather than these flame made of smoke i get the design change and all that is cool but i uh that was the only change that really affected how i viewed gay or, or like played it and yeah i think uh think how many good ones there's been though you know that have saved yeah some there's been a lot of the game's or way better or, mate yeah, the game yeah. is like literally feels like a legit competitive game these days i just i grew up loving co2 when it was inherently broken in every single way possible <laughs> and i had a lot of fun casting i could drink beer then a whiskey chaser then a couple of jaeger bombs like stormless was doing all the hard work on the controls and i was mm. just going quantify destruction explosion time <laughs> or stuka taking out a plane and things like that <laughs> yeah exactly it was just mad it was so silly yeah. but uh <laughs> well it still is got the madness it's just in a different form but uh why I had the sweatbands on early, I'm telling you, with with Isildur, he's not gonna be. <laughs> he doesn't take the game lightly. I don't think he's he's very plays to Mate. win every time. There's no meme. There's no off meta stuff with him. It's you know what I'm you're gonna, gonna have get. to tell Isildur that all of the conversations I've had with him this year will become public domain at some point because he gave me so much juicy insight as to how he thinks about it. It was quite frankly shocking because it made mm. me realize that all the other players need to be on notice. And hopefully it's filtered <laughs> out there, and hopefully Isildur's given enough of that away that he's spurred other people on, because he was approaching it incredibly scientifically. And it oh, was yeah, really yeah. alarming. It's, it's it was just... like obscene. It was that like, was... Oh, you're like a, an esports professional. You do realize it's only a grand on for first place, right? And you do realize that it's, it could be me mm. and Ed casting in the finals, and one of us will be drunk. And it, you know, it's. <laughs> so it's no, just I think, like... uh, yeah, he's, he just seems to have uh, nailed does, it yeah. down to a science and fair play to him. He's, and, it, and it wins more often than not, as proof is in the pudding. But Kimbo's definitely shook him up with those first two games. He's still on his last life, folks. He's got to win two more games to take the series. So it's it's all eyes on uh, Isidore, whether he can keep up that great performance that he showed last game. What's your favourite intro that I've ever made that isn't coronavirus? You know the crappy intros we do for tournaments, Ed? What's your personal fave? I've got them all down here. That'll the, lead um, game four. the like, Terminator, Commander Terminator. Oh, yes! Come it, on, Eddie boy, let's go! Me. In a world without variety, brutality is the only strategy. The Master League presents a tournament format sent to end the reign of Meta. This is the Command of Terminator.
And finally, after... OB- the t- Commander Terminator was too much for OBS, Ed. It, it pretty much <laughs> annihilated it, apparently. I don't know how that worked. It, it froze on me. It went not responding. And then all of a sudden, it slowly came back to life. So uh, we are now met with Game 4. Hopefully, no more explosions, please. That would be fantastic. <laughs> Only explosions from the two commanders from our two incredible players. We've got Kimbo with Urban Assault Company. We've got a Silda rocking in with, oh my my, a bit of Lightning War Doctrine. Ed, this is hot, it's juicy, it's spicy, it's Mill Road. What are we expecting here? Well, ho- well, expecting or hoping, I'm hoping for some G43 plays from Mistletoe. We'll see if he goes for that or M- LMGs on his Gwens. But uh, definitely expecting some high octane, big pressure from Kimbo, like we saw in game two of this series, where he did a fanatical <laughs> comeback, where just so much zeal and uh, basically just unbreakable will that got him that second game on VPs, a very tight one. But yeah, definitely can expect the same intensity from Kimbo. He's had a game off now, Matt, maybe, and uh, fully fresh and ready to go with his USF in game four here. This is the commander I play in 2v2s when I play my yearly USF 2v2. I just spam the <laughs> rifle nades. It's fun. And people don't expect it and they explode. Why is Kimbo in this game going for it, Ed? What are you expecting to see? Well, it's got the buffed Shermans, which in anybody's hands are tough, especially in Kimbo's hands, because they get extra HP and uh, really hard to penetrate, especially by the, the basic P4 of of uh, Austria, so I think that's the biggest strength of this. And um, when we get super late game, it might be able to afford a collab oh, as well. What a positioning by Sildur there, full around the clock flank. He's going all the way around the horn. MG42 has now found out Grenadier is doing all the DPS. We've got Pioneers watching on as more riflemen push in from Kimbo. He may have to retreat soon, but no, he's going to continue the assault with the first rifles. Grens pushed away. New Grens join the fray. They line up behind the fence panel as the MG takes a new position. Will it be enough, Ed? No, I think Kimbo needs to pull out of this engagement because he's got Grens popping away on the rifleman at the bottom. But, oh, the MG doesn't, in fact, be able to get any rounds off. That's unfortunate for us at all there. Really long setup time. Imperial Dame would be raging. But Relic! <laughs> Indeed, that's the rifle and all pushed down. away by the capping Grenadier. That wasn't even barely involved there. The MG gets out of that. I have to say, a little bit fortunate for his Isolde. Good pushing by Kimbo. And uh, let's have a little look at the early game KD. Uh, as, uh, I, think, I think it was a bad push there, Matt. Like, that's a lot of manpower loss. And we went on about that manpower in the second game for USF. Mm. It's crucial. But uh, Kimbo thought it was worth it just to push that MG off the field for a bit. He was constantly capping in the north in the meantime, so he's got that going for him. Turns out, he, he, I know he killed MG uh, tr- crew members more than riflemen that died, so it probably was actually MP neutral, uh, surprisingly. It looked bad. What I was saying, the push look was so good on paper, he, he deserved a little bit better there, I felt. Dev M says, um, oof, close series I see. It'd be interesting to see what he makes of this. Of course, a famous USF player. And uh, may not like to hear it, but Dev M and Kimbo share one vital thing, Ed. They all go, aren't they? They're the kind of players that rush in and attack, attack, attack. Yep. So, um, no, L- both- no MLG <laughs> crutch uh, Greyhound to secure the last VP, though, for, for Kimbo with his doctrine pick this time. So we'll see if he still goes to the M20 has got the lieutenant in and like dev M, he loves the usf on this map especially a little cheeky nade tech as well along the way might be coming so in we have the lieutenant out we've got the 222 tech in it all is normal it seems except for the score line which is going against the seeding of the ml the number one seed down in in jeopardy 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 scenario here he loses one more game he's down to the lower brackets interesting position by the mg there all the way at the northern kind of river ba- bed or the sewerage works rather yeah completely not going for the cutoff though slight weird flex with his rifleman instead he's going on a hunting mission for the two grens up north this is going to trade really badly as they're both in good cover Two to two yes. finds the Just rifleman that was joining them we get mm. the uh, there it is that was the incendiary grenade by the rifleman yeah, very powerful tool. You don't have to pay for any teching there. They just get it. And, uh, yeah, could definitely swing an engagement your ways. Yeah, 
does very well actually against the the G43s. We saw them. Then. He gets them singing. So all three grens with G43s. Surprisingly, Kimbo did very well with that engagement, despite coming into two. What grens year is this? Uh, G43s mm. are old school, man. Lightning War is. I still would hesitate to say possibly the most chosen commander in their map tournament history, but that's due to its heavy usage in olden times. Times long before this one. <laughs> Surprise. I surprised the uh, oh, what was it? mobile defense didn't win on that one. Just <laughs> sheer amounts of spam that Puma had exactly, back in the day. Exactly, yeah. I remember that. The mobile death Von, I uh, Von Ivan popularized, of course. But uh, here we go. We've got G43s on the hunt. The M20 watches on, though. And that's going to be uh, still in a bit of a glory period until this pack finally gets to the center ground. They sh probably shouldn't have eaten the horses. Yeah, when... Uh... When Asador gets his fourth command point, he can sprint him with all his G43s as well, on the move, greater accuracy, and uh, full sprint speed. So that can catch out Kimbo very well, especially with his light vehicles for Faust threat. Stuart's on its way. M20's um, done its job so far. He's only gotten two kills, but cheeky anti-tank mine coming down here. Will be uncovered by the Pioneers. Let's get on. No, he's just outside the veil. Oh, Whoa. naughty, naughty. I love it. He's. He, I think he should just drive south. No, he's backed up. Now he might be spotted. So now he's just seen an M20 come back. So he probably thinks, well, I've got to go sweep there. Whereas if he kept the M20 blind the whole time from the Pioneers. Yeah, he's, he's already taking Ooh, the Minesweeper. Yeah, he's not. Oh, the, these so players are just, just off that the tail. Chain. It was just that tail. Isidore should get into Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pokemon, did you say? <laughs> yeah. I don't think Pokemon, Pokemon would help Pokemon. him, Ed. What a terrible analysis. That makes no sense. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rifleman pushing. 2-2-2, two, 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 keeping the, the others at bay. We do have a small engagement in the west as the pack is ready for this. Stuart, the Faust comes in and gets him. Nice win for Isilda. Could be going to an ace game, Eddie. Yeah, it's that eight-minute losing a Stuart. Pretty, oh, this sort of impending doom at the moment. Could get a uh, ranger squad here, Kimbo, or could go for an ambulance just to get the healing up and uh, take it later game. But now Isidore is going to be flying straight towards that P4. He's do not stop, go. Uh, do not say go or stop at all because it's it's full speed ahead. Isidore needs this game four to survive, but uh, Kimbo is just kind of I don't know. Let us foot off the gas in, in, in this game specifically. Last game we still felt was pretty much anyone's until he lost his P4s, but this one, it does suddenly seem uh, rattled by us a little bit. It certainly does. And it all came down to that big engagement where he lost a lot of manpower in his life, I feel. Faust in, long range, heat seeking guided tomahawk missile, Faust. <laughs> As the rifle push in, very sultry laugh by Ed there. Was it, was it a banger? Pack! <laughs> the, 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 what I don't know why I'm pack, sorry Ed. <laughs> but the, uh, the, the composure now of Isildur, he's back in his groove, his axis on this map, he, he just seems so back in place, whereas Kimbo losing that steward so early, yeah, really does damage USF's uh, flow. He's going for another one, Matt, he's just thinking the hell with it. Getting a steward again. So now he's probably pretty much going to have to go for captain and back tech after the steward to get an AT gun out. Gren's got the cutoff. Triple cap for a cylinder now. He's woken up, Ed. He's not taking any prisoners now. Kimbo had rattled him earlier on, and to be honest, he was not getting enough map control. And that just shows you that Kimbo's output was oh so much greater. By the way, the mine definitely was swept earlier as the uh, M20 gets fausted yet again. What has this guy got? The technology he's using is, is out of this world. It's next level bait from Kimbo to use up all of uh, Isidore's munis. <laughs> so you can't Bazooka threatens the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. Oh, wayward bazooka shot. What was that from the lieutenant? Mm, could have been better. Out. Yeah. Looks like a Pat 43 setup, doesn't it? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Find the sandbag there. Find sandbags, yep. As the rifle will push through straight into an MG42, though, it's not going to look good. Good early retreat there from Kimbo. Look at that flanking, by the way, by Isildur. He's just going straight for the fuel. Our industry um, grows to support us. 
Riflemen are going for the victory point, of course. The enemy is taking yeah, our low territory. HP rifle zone, no healing on the side of Kimbo. So it's, it's rough old stuff for the USF. This is exactly the position you don't want to find yourself in. On your second Stuart and a P4 looming soon, but um, I think it's going to be... Is it tier 4 teched by Isidore? Or is that just him teching tier 2? No, he hasn't, no, had, just, he just hasn't had the fuel control authority yet then. No. He's just trying to get it now. Grenz lose out to the incendiary grenade in the west. Got real good push in action though. I think Asilda's really benefiting from the mobility of the G43s versus that Bayo game with the LMGs. Mm -hmm. I think versus Kimbo, he's so mobile himself that if you just sit and sit still, you know, you're going to get flanked. You're going to get 2v1. You have to be mobile yourself and we're seeing a lot of that from Asilda this game. Not as quite as a stationary sitting duck basically. I feel uh, Kimbo's really got to make use of the width of this map. It's it's a bit wider than Bale, it feels it at least. And he needs to stretch this a bit, but with four Grenadiers, he's just matching Kimbo's infantry force, which is weird for us to. They should be a squad behind usually on the infantry count. But he's got his tier 3 up now as this Isidore. So this is going to be about a 13 14 minute P4. It is. Tier 3 constructed and uh, yeah let's see where Kimbo's thinking is he even no he's not close to it he's got the 120 fuel to go to get the major he doesn't he's even not... have bars or no or a Sukata. captain yeah it's 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 rough for Kimbo for sure I just think, it's like uh... an ace game no we love to ace games eh? <laughs> that's where we can all yeah. hang out and just go crazy it's good stuff well, imagine if we had Austrupen on Mechanized, they would have been the, the factions, I'm sure, picked on. What was this, this Faust? <laughs> through through the house, Faust! <laughs> Isilda's Threaded pulling them it. all all out of the bag. He's just like, long range behind the back, Faust! <laughs> you go home, you go back to your Frauliner back in <laughs> back in Munich, Germany. All of a sudden, Isilda Faust you from, from behind <laughs> whilst you're on rest and recuperation, Faust! <laughs> he gets you like, at every angle. Like the Worms 2 homing pigeon. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's He's fun. got super sheep and all sorts, mate. Concrete, concrete donkey <laughs> Fausts. Armageddon Faust. He's got the shebang. MG42 and Grenadier escaping whilst the 222 hunts him down. And here comes the M20 utility car. Kimbo, do never sleep on Kimbo. He will shank you. Yeah, P4 half cooked though. So Kimbo's got to retreat back, take out some... Much needed capping here to get the VPs. Oh! There's a cheeky teller. Out of control he goes. 2 to 2 gets the kill. Kill stealing. Mother. I love the acceleration it has to die. <laughs> if it could show that speed normally, then it would be fine. Twisted Tutsi uh, does on a regular basis, mate. He yeah. plays in that mode. He's always out of control. <laughs> Meanwhile, we've got fuel control coming in from Isilda, but he hasn't got his own cutoff, so he doesn't have his own fuel right now. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why the steward is dancing with death at the moment. That is pride and joy of the USF army at the moment. It's going to oh, get fausted. No, any and packs to follow pack up? No. no, it's way back Just in base. pulling back. But the P4 can pick it up for free. And I don't think he can damage its engines fast enough. So all eyes on this big bad P4 now for this The hunt begins. I'm having fun with this, guys. I'm sorry if it's unprofessional, but it, it is funny. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I certainly say that, yeah. As the riflemen escape, the Stuart certainly won't. He gets a cheeky shot off, and Kimbo taps out with the Stuart intact. So, moral victory, but certainly <laughs> a very, very real defeat as we head to a deciding ace game. Game five, let's go. go we're heading mm. to the side ace game let's check the map let's go over to the brackets lads and uh, have a little look at some spoiler alerts from the low brackets we haven't looked at them yet so uh here's the excitement coming from down there eddie let's go ch take a look shall we sure sure thing so, the uh, results are in i will read yeah. them like a, a, a british oh, okay. uh, football <laughs> radio 4 uh, results reader <laughs> P4 
PFC 1, Ashablaw United 2, Quiritsaw Guile 2, Orange Pest Racing 1, Young Baoliang 0, Rail Dev M 2, Creative Name versus Von Aston was abandoned due to snow on the pitch. And then Dev M two in the middle of April, <laughs> UK weather. <laughs> there we go. We've got Ashablaw Quirits. What do you make of those games? Had any surprises there? One surprise was Orange Pest going down to Quirits. He's not gonna like that one. So Quirits, uh, I think, upset a bit of uh, the predictions across the board for um, for winning that one. Um, Dev M two nil in Bow. So Bow was unable to pick up a game, but I think that's just Dev M style. Sometimes he's you know, he's wide heart when, when he's on form. Just crushed through him. And now he's 2 0 to creative name as well. Yeah, I could probably see that happening. But um yeah, Asherblow and Quirits. Hmm. I would probably go with Asher. But Fair enough, fair yeah. enough. It's gonna be close though. Quirits says do not, don't sleep on Quirits. That guy's really good. Uh, we had to observe him after some plays like who the hell's this guy? You know, this this can't be real. So we I checked his replays and he's, he's a damn good player. Stream he's one of those... plays a lot, like he's he's always yeah, he's very good. DevM's already through to um, day four, which is in two weeks' time. We're going to have a little bit of a break so we can all have a palate cleanse, do something else with our lives for one weekend only. Um, <laughs> DevM's. <laughs> what, what is this? What is this? So we've got DevM waiting for the loser of Isilda Kimbo. Um, so whoever loses this best of five ace game faces DevM in two weeks' time. And mm. the deciding map, just to confirm, is indeed. Nexus City. Kimbo Dev M could be gloriously high paced game. But uh yeah. I don't know if Kimbo's just thrown everything all into it in these earlier games, Matt. Like you said, he's on cooldown after game two, but you'd understand that for game three, maybe it was a bit, you know a bit burnt out, but for game four he has to get his head back in. He just seems a bit like I was in that streamer cup. Like he's he's given his best game almost, and he does seem a bit fatigued now mentally. And uh, Isildur just going from strength to strength in these games. He's picked up two games in a row. Can he make it three? Or will Kimbo? Has he just debated us all just to bring out a Ed, five Ed, games? Would you more? do an uncommon request, mate? I'm I'm not asking sure. for anything special for my birthday or anything. Don't worry. What I am asking for, however, is can you oh, write no. down the victory points? Can you write down the victory points for me? I'm going to give you the victory point scores of all the players. And we've been asked to do this by the refs, so yeah, yeah. Uh, just got to go through the VODs. I, I made my VODs private, by the way, not because I'm oh, a money-grabbing whore, but because I wanted everybody to watch it on my YouTube, because I think that's... It's fair enough, isn't it? You, you watch it on the one thing I care about, my YouTube. I thought that was a nice little deal. But unfortunately, the refs can't see the victory point scores, so my flagrant capitalism has fired in my own foot. Anyway, so we're counting wins only, Ed. Um, the first okay. one was yeah. Silda, uh, no, Kimbo won that, and he won with uh, 500 victory points, of course. Um, let's go over to game two, which he also won. Yep. So five, 500 for Kimbo so far, and then we've got... Yep. He won the second one, didn't he, in that mental game. It's absolutely ridiculous. Spamming through my vod. Yeah, twenty VPs if I can remember. It was obscene, mate. It was something silly. Let's see if you're right. Um, getting there slowly but surely. I'm on the like fifty-first minute. Oh, there's our faces. It went too far. I don't want to see our faces. <laughs> Bloody hell. Went too well, we far. Oh, here we go. I've got it. Play back over. The victory point was forty. It says four zero. 40. Cool. Yeah, let me just verify. Him. Game two, Kimbo forty. Game three. <laughs> so we now we've got yeah five forty for Kimbo, and now let's get Izzy's scores. Um, right. Yeah. Bit of admin on the weekend. What is this? I uh, know. Sorry, Ed. You're not getting paid <laughs> enough or at all. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Sea waters. <laughs> just not enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So game three, Isildur. I'm nearly there. Ah, here we go. Got it. Let me just let the uh, thing flash up on my screen. So I'm looking for... Ah, bloody hell. Hang on. 
Creative name calling for disqualification to both players for not writing down the VPs. Yeah. Yeah, I agree completely. We'll, We're going to need three one... YouTube oh, videos shit. from Matt and uh, Relic <laughs> Vault to sort that one out. One six two for Izzy. One six two in game three. Yeah. Cool. And we've got game four coming up. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Oh, that's quick. Yeah, there we go. God, game four was over in a flash, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. But so was... So oh, here we go, uh, here we go. Uh, game one, Isilda man. this time. God, that's high. Four. Wait for the bloody grayness of Twitch. Oh, caught me. It's got like a black border on the screen. I need to wait for it to I'm going 1990s CCTV cosplay at the moment. Uh, come on. <laughs> there we go. 493, Ed. 493. Cool. So just add up the two Izzy numbers for me. Yeah. Long addition with Ed. Uh -oh. <laughs> carry the Carry the one. <laughs> Right, Issel, I'll do Isildur first, combined as 655. Ooh. And Kimbo is an easy one because he had nice round numbers when he won or lost. Um, <laughs> sorry, won both times. Um, Kimbo is 540 combined. Yes, Izzy gets pick of who chooses first. So basically, the players always say to their opponent, yeah, you choose first, it's fine. Anybody? Meaning that you get to counter pick. It's all it's all about the counter pick. But we'd like to give the players who the the coin winner an option of if he wants to like have BDE and just choose a faction, or he can say to the opponent to choose a faction basically. So yeah, Deutschland efficiency always helped uh, by the Brits, of course. What was that app that um... oh. Grinder Grinder mate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Finnish guy who helped us with GCS2 helped you big time with the app. GCS2.org, the website. Jan. No, Jan. Yeah. Oh, GCS2.org, the website. It's amazing. Uh, he it's the, made greatest, the greatest thing in it made us an actual esport for a little while. We made this website together. He did all the engineering, I did all the artwork and the writing. And yeah. it was like a labor. I only did this because I was working for the council. So I was on uh, an agency temp job at the council, earning really good money to do nothing. Uh, and Jan is the one of the probably the best community contributor ever because he's contributed so much without falling out with anybody. I mean, I fall out with everybody and I contribute a lot, so I'm not as good as Jan. That's how that works, basically. Maybe but your falling to... outs are the contribution. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Win -win. Go, to, go to gcs2.org, check it out. It's a phenomenal piece of engineering. And what Ed is referring to is go to the brackets and you can have a look at, like, um, it's still. I pay for this to be done, every, oh, to be I, refreshed yeah, yeah. every year. I send Jan the money. He calls it our baby. He says, can you send me, um, what's it called, like, money for the baby? You know when you leave a woman and you run out on your family and you have to send them money? What's that called? Uh, Ed, you should know about this. You've got loads of love childs, so I know. <laughs> yeah, but they're miles away from home. What so. is it called? Child support. This is my child. I have to pay for every year this get updated. Child support. That's it, you guys. You're all on it. <laughs> but yeah, you can go and check it out. Greatest tournament we've ever had by far. It does not get better than this, GCS2. Alimony. Wait, yeah, so in this app, I think people players put in their VPs, right? At the they end. do. It's all, all recorded. Yeah, you can see the victory point scores. Simple and effective. Just and engineering, busy. folks. Just so much upkeep. It's a, it's easier to... Well, it's very easy to... It's not easy to make something. It's hard, but it's rewarding. Upkeep of an existing system is just work. So you can make something complicated and cool, like a programmer like Jan um, did in this case, but he, mm. he does... Nobody would want to keep this up to date because of the amount of work involved. So we, I did mention it to the powers that be you know come on guys this would be cool maybe we could like keep this going <laughs> but no it's it's yeah it's a one and done thing unfortunately that's yeah, just more things maybe for co3 and looking forward that could that's be included yeah exactly. if it's a co3 i'd love them to have an engine that's even half as good as what we made for gcs2 uh, and it would be probably half as good i'm not trying to big ourselves up too much but yeah pretty damn good all right, we've got five minutes till the game is live. It's just started in IRL, but we're five minutes in the past, so there we Good go. Stuff. Looking forward to it. This is the fifth and final game of today's series, folks. So um, tomorrow you'll be able to catch with Angry Dutchman and AE the uh, Love Nest series. So I'm sure there's 
probably about 500 Germans here just to, just to see <laughs> Love Nest. Vov wants to <laughs> Love Nest. Varum is Love Nest. I can't speak German. <laughs> Varum is Love Nest. What does this mean? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's why it's Love Nest. <laughs> <laughs> But von Stu um, is where do you live, Love Nest? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Comps is Comps live? Where do you live? V -comps Mate, you had so much better education uh, than me, probably. So. V Comps I think, is where you're from, or where do you live? But uh, either way, he he's he'll be. Vo is Love Nest. There we go. Vo oh, is okay. Love Nest. <laughs> there we go. We sorted it. <laughs> That's it, Flaster. We're hyped in the house. Hey, he's rescuing his 32 gigabytes of RAM from the. Um, awful hostage takers that is uh, the relic coders from 2013 <laughs> the clutches of code 2's memory bank but how, <laughs> how, how, does, how, how Re relics <laughs> coders relics coders from 2012 just put all the ram in the bag put it in the bag <laughs> <laughs> like transport a relic edition <laughs> threaded processors we don't need them single threading only single thread ram in the back <laughs> rule number one we don't talk about the ram <laughs> but, but basically I think with um, how, how do in Co3 say how do you think ahead because you never know like hyper threading or what it's, Intel it's are going to kick the out AMD so it is really tough for developers to think so far I, I, I know the history of this. I don't know if it's in well, public but... domain yet but um, basically, Relic were in a do or die situation when they made Co2. Um, THQ were going under, like yeah. their publisher was going defunct. And at last second, uh, Sega were buying them and stuff, and there was a big sa a sale off. So Co2 nearly didn't get made, basically. So all this shit we chat, to be fair, Relic did a really good job with Co2 to actually make it happen and yeah. to keep it updated. So I will chat crap about them. But at if, the end of the day, if you want something good. more up to date, you can always try Dawn of War. <laughs> <laughs> Penclip says Co Three will be female soldiers only and in space. That's exactly yeah. right, and they will um, be all. No, it won't be female. I don't want to do SJW. Company of heroines. <laughs> heroines. Heroine. I won't do SJW jokes because it makes me look really stupid. But uh, it's funny to laugh, isn't it? <laughs> His name's Pencil P Five, by the way, Matt. You fell short again. Of the pen, pen clip, mate. I've been calling him pen clip for four years. I'm not going to stop now. I, I misread that four years ago, Ed. He's always been pen clip on my stream. How Me? dare you rewrite my neuro? Everyone has always read him. No, wait. What did my. I think my sister read him as penis P5 or something. So, tricks everyone. Do you know what? On this such subject, we're all sexist, possibly. Racist without knowing it, middle class white men. Most of us are, and the ones that aren't are in again, a very, man. very, very, very valuable minority. But as Ra Mass Effect 2 for me was my little guilty pleasure because all the women in that were like the camera angles were so gratuitous. It was amazing. I was like a sexually repressed 21 year old playing Mass Effect 2, like, you know. <laughs> No girls were interested in my World War Two anecdotes. It was terrible. It was terrible. They're terrible. So I must have and now they're remaking it but without Mass the camera effect. angles. In my there. Pants. <laughs> exactly. The camera angles for me was all about. Yeah, I never it's very it. sad. Everyone on my home planet died. Camera pans to ass. <laughs> I was just like, why would they change that? That's oh, if you're so gonna get weird. delivered bad news, at least have something nice to look at whilst <laughs> receiving exactly. it. Exactly, space yeah. booty is best booty. Yeah. Nope, John Barton says. But are we, the game is now live. I can go into it after that momentary aside. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so professional. <laughs> it's incredibly professional. We get it. We get all of our Jimmy's rustled in before the game starts. Ed, it's the best time to do it. Uh, just yeah. go, blah, 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 and then cast professionally ed on that note um i'm paying you today in intros you can choose from which one would you like next we well, had the cover in a cup that was my fave um it's time that one with it's time that's my favorite one piece one. of work yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this is heinz godot's favorite so shout out to him for the one v one elite sure it's time for the one v one Elite. Show down. Yep. Oh, it's time. 
It's time indeed for a bit of Nexus, a bit of an ace game deciding showdown between the mighty Kimbo playing his shock rifle frontline tactics versus the indomitable Isilda. I'm AE, I'm here of course with Ed 80 Hertz and uh, we're in for a bit of a treat. Yep, game five, do or die time, loser goes down to the bottom bracket which you do not want to be in, pit of death, they have to meet uh, Dev M and Another such nasty skulkers down there, but uh, meanwhile here, Kimbo going for Soviet's map for the f uh, first time today for him, not USF. I think uh, game four was just so bad for him, he felt like anything but USF. So Isildur does get his Oster, which um, has been proficient for today. Yes, well, it was it's definitely worked on Mill Road. I think Nexus is a decent map for it, as long as you can defend this area here that's on my screen right now, because, you know, the, the assaults in and around that area are pivotal, uh, pivotal if you go for the south. And uh, Double Grand Star is interesting. Airfield and chat picked up on that. That's, uh, yeah, I'd have to say. By the way, Ed, let's look at Kimbo's commander. Are you liking what you see? Yeah, I'm liking what I see. It's, uh... <laughs> definitely all out offensive it suits uh, Kimbo and he, and this, he's got the sneakiness you know those little poker plays from him he can get the anti-tank gun on hidden which is very strong with scissors so the crooks for Kimbo is going to be just trying to minimize any damage of Isidore's proficient early game and uh, get to that T70 as soon as possible I like his double mine bulletins Matt, this is the way for Soviets to play <laughs> definitely <laughs> build faster what what more could you want and we're getting lightning war from a silver so i just love to hear a little bit of uh, thunder na -da -na -da 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 -da. <laughs> come on get psyched up for this lads this is gonna be good we are in the early game just a little bit of poking around having a little hello my dog is worried about me she's coming to check on me don't worry lady it's absolutely fine darling please don't do that thing where you headbutt my she's doing it headbutting my mouse hand away from the mouse it's adorable if you're not me she like no, headbutts it away <laughs> with your mouse play we're fine give it me attention <laughs> <laughs> exactly um anyway grens are winning out at the moment from long range versus the conscripts you would expect that to happen four grens is the call from a silver he's liking these g43s ed yeah, no MG42 though, so abandoning the MG42 belief and Sanctuary for, to help out as Grenz instead just going for more of them. Probably going to see those G43 singing once yeah. again. What a pop there with the Rock 9 flamethrower. Grenz caught out, but they pushed the combat engineers out of there. you got more coming in as well. I'll tell you what, Asilda's playing this well. Let's check out the Northern engagement where we've got combat engineers lined up to face the Grenadier menace. Yeah, and they're slightly lower HP, so. I think the pioneers will do well. Sick mid view oh. with the old surfer babes. Conscripts help <laughs> out on the uh, Rock 9 Flame for a squad there, so good stuff from Kimbo. Again, we're seeing Soviets with only three cons build and double double pioneers, which is a slightly weird flex. Usually you want four cons, but I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I'm seeing more and more of this. It will lead to shock troops, of course, which are pretty decent. They've always been good, let's face it. Is this a good map for shock troops? You'd have to say yes. You've got these two large assembly areas, the big uh, walls, but are they good in the late game? That's the question you've got to ask yourself, Ed. They do shred manpower, don't they? Yeah, I just feel Forcons are so good because if you lose one, you're still at that <laughs> beautiful uh, three con mark, whereas only having three cons, hmm can't really overwhelm your opponent. I think Kimbo relies on that a lot, of just pure pressure with multiple Zerg-like troops, but we'll see how it works out for him with just three of the cons. Has Asilda unlocked Kimbo in this series? Has he figured out how he needs to play against the Polish Menace? Because it certainly could be the case. Asilda's one of those players, Ed. He's fluid. He will play in the best way to counter you. He doesn't have a set classic Asilda playstyle other than using a crap ton of tap map. But his overall build orders and his way he approaches at each game tends to be rather unique to his opponent, it has to be said. And that's made him very successful in the last year. But he's won the last two games, Ed. Has he now really found the measure of Kimber? Found his timing versus the, his uh, opponent? Well, he's found it's very painful dealing with a... <laughs> Uh, flamethrower with merging conscripts and support because that just took on three grens and sent them homeward bound to think again 
But uh, two to two's out now, Matt. And I think as as this will go, unlock Skimbo. Oh, ten kills now. Oh. Ten oh. kills burns him through the fences. But it's everything's a homeward bound move, now. We're not talking about out. Simon. We're not oh, talking about Simon and Garfunkel. But we've got this 2-2-2 two, two, two coming in from the eastern side. Can we plant this mine in time? Yeah, Kimbo's got one mine down in the south, luckily. Oh, well, west of mid. And uh, just got a second one down there. So now it won't be a naked retreat back home against the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. There is a threat of those mines, but Kimbo desperately needs a Ziz gun. Instead calls in shock troops. That's going to put him back a lot on the manpower. It is, yeah. And I just have to say, with G43 shot troops, the, the problem with the shot troops is you can keep moving away from them and make them run onto you with the G43s, and it it doesn't hard counter them, but if you play, play it well, it certainly can. Yep, Co2, bit of AoE kiting addition. <laughs> it's going to have to be employed here, I think, from the Sodor's troop, but with the 2-2-2, that could be a menace on the troop paths. Only three cons, so you've got less threat of a snare globally on the map. Up Shaw's pushing. Famous... Uh, I mean, a submachine gun. The Germans picked them up wherever they could because they were just so handy. Just a big uh, drum magazine as well. Mine yeah, detonates. Caliber, but when there's 71 bullets in a drum mag coming at you, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, sort of sweeping with his grenadiers. Always painful for Austria, but sometimes has to be done. Finding that mine and uh, 2 to 2. Let's see how much value he can get in before T70. I think it's going to be a very late T70 because the Ziz has been picked, so manpower down for Kimbo despite such a good play with his flamethrower, already getting Vet 2 on that uh, combat engine. The side constructs capping in the center, we've got, um, oh no he's not even, yeah he is, he's, is he throwing a grenade but then didn't get the cancel on it, I think he was going to throw a smoke grenade and just lost the munitions without actually getting the grenade off there, that's not the best timing. But there it is Ed, there's what you wanted, that's the Ziz gun. Well, he could have gone T T70 instead, but it feels like now, because he's committed to the Ziz and the manpower, probably to save and keep taking up right to tier 4 could be the play. But T70 on this map, map, it's long retreat pass, could still be a terror. Sander reliably informs me the smoke just didn't render. Oh, okay. Interesting. <laughs> if you say so. Is that in the stats? He can tell me what's happening in my version of the game. He's hooked up, he's put uh, malware on my computer. Nice shot by the Ziscon. 2-2-2 two, two, two could eat another here. Outside the cone of fire. Good work by Isilda. Just got away. And the smoke, I'm sure, played a part in it as well and helped. So, yeah, good work from both players there, though. Yeah, well said, well said. It's, 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 uh, it's always one thing that's made me think, Matt. Just hold fire could be the strongest ability in this game on your Ziscon. Why do people always shoot when they're at max range or, you know, close to max range? Why not just hold fire, let that thing come in a bit closer, and then you more than guarantee the second shot's going to get off on a light bit. Do you know what's really revealing about the lack of even approaching the skill ceiling of this uh, RTS title? Mm. Um, I think it might have been Jibber, or somebody said in chat, did you know that if you attack ground, if you attack ground with your tank, that tank becomes phased through a ball? So you can drive oh. through it with another tank. So if you get stuck, you just attack ground, and your tank, can, your other tank, can drive through the tank yeah, yeah, that yeah. is using attack ground. Wow! All the top players in this game didn't know about that. They were all like, "Oh wow, really?" Everybody came out and was like amazed. Mm. That just shows you that people aren't playing this anywhere near to its potential. Oh anywhere yeah, Anywhere yeah. near to its potential. Like hold, hold fire on pack guns, especially in the two v two, and then suddenly you release the volley uh, together. So much more powerful, but so hard to. Get that teamwork and coordination right but the same goes in a 1v1 so often we see two uh, AT guns huddling around like penguins <laughs> traversing the map together on a dime rather than being spread out coming at angles and I think the best player who tries to uh, counter that a bit is helping hands actually where he would have two different angles for his AT guns and yeah definitely MG42 sets up, conscripts Urar into them, but they're actually been a bit of a distraction here for not only the Zisparos, but the shots coming in. 2-2-2, two, 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 good to get some good shots off on them, and forcing them to retreat instantly. Kimbo seems to have the better of it now, but oh, look at this, a little bit of tactical movement, basically sprinting like madmen. Straight into the uh, combat engineers, trying to get rid of them first. Here comes the further grenadier to join the fray. Oh, you're gonna burst out into Beatles song now. <laughs> Here comes the song. Do, 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 do. Is it? 
Here did. comes this Definitely. Spartan, <laughs> and they say, Snow, snow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is going to be a T70, so he doesn't want to wait for that tier 4. Gimbo Amazing. has committed to the, the tiny terror tank, and uh, yeah, he's going to have to get a lot of work done because it, we're encroaching tier 3 upgrade for Isildur time in now. The tiny trapezoid of terror <laughs> is upon us. In every game ever. Like in reality, yeah, weren't only like 30, 30 of these things built. Mate, like you couldn't even trash. shoot on the move with the T70. <laughs> like this it was game a, was like, Whoa. I think it may have been a three-man crew. Or it was a three-man crew. One guy in the turret. Like it's just, it's nonsensical, you know. Like the, their, util their utilization in this game is the most overpowered unit in our game series history. That's like used every single Soviet game ever. A bit made up. The amount of shell shock you must receive from surviving an anti-tank gun to a T-70, you'd be an absolute pinball in the middle of that thing. <laughs> anyway, MG-42 has been thoroughly circumvented, is retreating back to base. Let's keep an eye on the centre as we've got a sneaky this sneaking up. Yeah, going for the T-70 instead of the T-34 was an interesting decision. Cooks there for Kimbo. He definitely had the option on to stall. Whereas Isidore now, we all know, we all know what he's going to go up for. But can he defend against the old Zizbao Ajmat, the strongest thing in the Soviet army? Yeah, Bluey Wolf. So we have some people say two-man guns, but sometimes it was a three-man with the shortest men in the army. If you turn the turret too fast, you could break his back. Gren's pushed back. Pack needs to break its back to get back into position. Shot pushing in as well. We have had one shot, one shot off on the T70 rather, and everything's pushed back to base for Silda Kimbo, thoroughly in control. Yeah, he's got the. Claws out for this game. He's swiping away at Isidore. He's, he's battered and bloodied. Had to retreat all of his Grens, pretty much. And uh, yeah, two to two hasn't been able to get much done uh, before that. Ziz came online, and now the T70 to back it up. But he is going to hit a good timing window where he'll have a P4 for maybe a couple of minutes before Kimber can get his medium armor out. So let's see if Isidore can turn a corner on that timing window. Kimbo's got a build tier 4 as well. So, I know he has the map right now, um, Kimbo, but not for long. As, as Ed rightfully mentions with the Panzer IV arriving, it's going to change quickly. We have had the package built for Kimbo as well, so he'll be able to stall a little bit with the 18 8 at least. But 39 fuel a minute doesn't doesn't hurt. <laughs> it does not hurt at all, no. <laughs> like, this is a... Ooh, this doesn't hurt as well. Good shot by the Ziskun. Can there be follow-up? No, the Grens push in and force him away. Keep him honest. Yeah, and there's extra resources on this white flash. We bought map, so you got to think as well. When you're losing map control, you really are getting punished hard on this one. Oh, nice, this volley. 60 <laughs> manpower down the drain. Kimbo just... Throw him bombs out there. It's the strongest thing I'm telling you. It's the scariest thing as Austin. Your MG crew is never safe from a Zisbarage. Do you remember when you nearly killed yourself to try and beat Elpern in that tawny game and then he just Zisbaraged you out of existence? <laughs> so, oh, yeah, sorry. I know you're like a rank 200 trying to beat me and win the best game of your life, but how about 20 Zisbarages? I was watching that. I was like, oh, this is sad, man. <laughs> Come on, not like this, not like this. Anyway, we've got a flare off. Grenadier is still trying to neutralize the fuel. That's the tough state of Silder, and he stayed in there way longer than he usually otherwise would. That is a psychological tell that he knows he's on the ropes here, Ed. Yeah, but he's got a P4 at the ready. If he wants it. Yep, it's a bit late clicked in, but he finally gets around to it. And uh, Kimbo's not going to have any medium armor immediately to counter it, so what can he do? In a, it's going to be about, what, one minute? Maybe... Oh no, both both engineers full retreat to go to go build that tier 4 for Kimbo, so he's realized the threat. Mine there, and yep, he's going to... This is the moment we were worried about when he has to go back and build tier 4. It gives him so much less pressure on the field, so Isilda will now go into map control mode, and the... Um, passage of Kimbo dominance it's, it's going to ebb away. He's now going to have to rebuild and reapply the pressure Ed. It's a constant ebb and flow in Company of Heroes 2 top level when all things are level and even.
Yeah, and he's got double double engineers working on that building to make it as fast as possible. So that's that's can be there. He's, he oh, hasn't finished he's it. it. No, what's he doing? Oh, no. Oh, that's a vital mistake. To fix, uh, oh, it's so critical. Could oh, have dear. had T-34 building by now, but uh, yeah, slide miss. Misplay there from Kimbo. I don't know. It's only a misplay, really, though, if you get punished for it. So. He, he, that, do you know what that is? He shift commanded without shift down. He only shift commanded in his brain, Ed. He wasn't, wasn't actually yeah. holding shift down on the keyboard. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it actually... Then he goes back to do it after doing the T70. Only a little bit delayed, but all this time matters. It is a real-time strategy. It's not chess or or something he's else. He's KV8 now. If you wanted to get really spicy. Also, this doctrine has an IS2, folks, but for some reason, again, the profile picks doesn't show it. Yeah, that's the real one there. Um, for whatever yeah. reason, in this it overlay. Could go KV8 it's... rush and just fly, ha ha! But uh, I don't think that would be very prudent. <laughs> Was that an Alan Partridge reference? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh -huh, knowing you! I always, I always imagine Alan Partridge with <laughs> massive bass guitars just ready to go in a KV. <laughs> <laughs> knowing you, German troops. Knowing me, KV2. Uh -huh. <laughs> Indeed. But anyway, we've got shocks pushed away. Lined up German troops. So much material. What a shot there by the Panzer IV on retreat. Or on reverse, however. But the Ziss hasn't covered. Misses, however. Gren's coming in. And a second Ziss gun for Kimbo, so it does indeed look it's like looking, to me, Ed. Yeah, he's going to get a big heavy tank, and he's going to use the Ziss guns yeah. to get him there. A lot of stall vibes going down at the moment, but saying that, how did this all do a win with um, Soviets in that previous game? He just massed T-34s and games. Oh, three. mine here. 2-2-2 two, two, two gets awfully close, Ed. Awfully close. Six cents keeping him alive here. Yeah. Backs up just before. But, uh, yeah, I was, I was just going to say, Matt, T-34s, we, we just saw how strong they were. But no, Kimbo's not going to mass them up. It's going to instead save for an all-in one big unit, which against skill planes and the Tiger, I feel is, is a bit riskier. But if anyone can pull off some risky players, it is Kimbo. And all your eggs in one basket can result in a beautiful omelette, but other times it can just <laughs> result in a sticky mess, and we'll have to see what happens with Kimbo right now. Double pack gun now for Isildur, so despite this big fuel income he's got, he's uh, solidifying up as well. So we could see the, the age-old battle of IS-2 versus Tiger, which would be nice. Ed, so, stop uh, dreaming, mate. You're jinxing it. Just I'm, say something I'm, boring. Say, I'm we're going to see on. double AT guns into skill playing usage over and over again. And, and that, that'll, then maybe we'll get a tiger. Get the toes to uh, try and hope for the best here that we get a big, heavy, heavyweight ball of tanks. But uh, yeah, it is hopeful thinking. Is this gun going to get a plink away on the people? No. Oh, nice shot there by the Ziss. It was a trap for the 2-2-2. Two, two, two. He needs to go north to get out of there, but he's done a bit of a circle. And now he's doing his last circling maneuver as he goes out of control. Meanwhile, in the center, in the, center the pioneers are capping as a sentinel of um, Silda's army. They dodge and aid really well there and jump straight back into their duty. It is dying breath, though. The 2-2-2 two, 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 out of control did take out a chip flare mine <laughs> for the cause. It was pretty... Oof, poetic. As the P4 tries to blast the shock troops, they get hella low. They need to get out of there. Good retreat there from Gimbo. I wish I'd thought of chat's comments and chat for that last uh, death of the 2 2 2. It could have been the drift of the dead, the deadly donut of doom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there are a few good ones. The T70 could be about to do that say, said donut as the Pac 40 had it in its sights, but we have a smattering of aggression in the center. The south is uncontested as we speak, so it's consolidated warfare. Matt's going through his whole thesaurus of alliterations right now to uh, bring you the best in this commentary, but it has been a lot of fuel for Isidore, not too much for Kimbo, so it is a slow and steady grind towards the IS-2. I believe it's 12 CPs, Matt? Something if we like hover that, over yeah. the commander, I think the old school pictures will tell you. Certainly will. It is 12 it's indeed. Not He's not got it just yet, then. Look at that. He's pushed back in base at the moment. We've got these few Vanguard units for uh, Silda, just keeping the victory point control scenario in his uh, favour. MG42 finds the conscripts. Yeah, nearly dead even on VPs. Dead even on army composition, pretty much. Uh, Favouring Isildur a bit. 
But this is the old classic, man. This is the original <laughs> faction. <laughs> that was the longest rifle, date. Yeah, but no, the sandbags just, if it clips the sandbags by a millimeter, it negates any damage. The sandbags soak up the rifle grenade's soul. They're so powerful. Yeah, it depends if it crosses over green cover. The damage it's like a gets line, hard. isn't it? Yeah, something. Yeah. No, I, th I think if it if touches a sandbag, it just doesn't exist. I, don't, I need Sanders to confirm. <laughs> that seems to be the case. There's never any damage. We do finally have a bit of south um, southerly love as Kimbo goes to that arena, and we just have a bit of a moment lulling activity yet as we uh, as we ask somebody in chat to do a poll. They want a two-minute poll. Who's going to win this deciding ace game? Is it going to be Kimbo or Isilda? That's forward slash poll. If you can get on that, lads, I am keenly interested in your response. going off as the T-70 is now up to his only, oh my god, his second kill. One of the most nullified T-70s ever. Cheeky tower mine to keep aware of there, Ed, for the... Nearly vet either, so he did get some good hits on that 2-2. Insane veterancy for only two kills on a T-70, but uh, yeah, P4 doing some work. Kimbo crucially did spot the tower mine in the mid before... Oh, and here he is! Made of aggregates of Stalin's <laughs> chest hair! And the very finest pig iron that Soviet, co Soviet communism can provide. It's the IS-2, the bunker-busting behemoth. 122 millimeters of Wehrmacht blapping action it is gaining traction on Nexus today. Yeah, and what do you favor, folks? An IS-2 or a Tiger? I don't know. Did you say Tiger? Do you mean Panther, yeah? T-70 <laughs> is just about surviving versus that double pack onslaught. Panzer IV watches on, but here he is. The you triple B. Tigers this little because why would you go a Panther? Oh, I don't know. You deserve to lose now, Ed. Let's just stop watching. But Panther, well, Panther may be a bit more pen against the old um, IS-2, but still. Oh, this is, this is toothless against infantry, and if you start wiping some cons, it's... Game ogre for uh, Kimberly, but yeah, interesting choice again for Mr. Dor. It cost him that game too, didn't it? He didn't get the tiger there. He went Panther. And uh, so oh, this is this is big, Ed. 122 mil. This is all these grandies. Can he get around the sandbag and get one big shot off there? But the packs are ready. No, he's putting his attention on the uh, MG42. Oh my God, shock troopers! What are they doing? G43s could finish the job here. Indeed, they do. Surely they do. Yes. In the back of the head, they fall. <laughs> Costly mistake there from Kimbo. Just caught Maiko in his uh, IS-2, I think. Couldn't shift over to the sh shock troops just in time. <laughs> Smash that retreat button with all his might. But uh, can instantly replace the shock troops. Oh, so we've got Stukas coming down from the sky above. Here they come. They're finding this IS-2. She's going to be on work over time trying to spot those planes and take them out. And but uh, survives the big investment of munitions. Oh, will this T 70 survive, Ed? Look at the hunting party out for it. The Panthers gunning for the little light tank. There are some mines down here, though, so this has so got to watch out. He doesn't have a sweeper on board, he's only got one engineer as well, so he's going to have to address that and probably get a second pioneer. Oh, it doesn't hit the mine, though, with the Grens, so. The, the Panther still Oh! IS-2 nice. just ate a monstrous shot from the rear there from that Panther. It's going to be out of action for a while now. Good steady play here though from this one. Didn't, didn't overcomplicate things. Got the pack guns back. <laughs> Sense blood in the water but didn't go for it. A low HP IS-2 but look at his composition. You don't get that from throwing 50-50s. Uh, up the spout, so good play there from Missledor. Composed play here on a game five map. Their nerves must be going berserk. Oh, the Panzer IV has been found out by the double Zisses. Eats a big shot, but spout to kite away. T70, meanwhile, getting the Grens. We've had, by the way, oh, nice from the pack. Forcing away the T70. You have to keep an eye on this. There's a double pack. They've become an yeah. anti organism. What the hell is that? It's an that octo pack. Other, as, as we mentioned before, the 16 arms, two penguins. barrels. Four wheels, it's the Octo Pack. <laughs> Have you heard the legend of the Octo Pack? <laughs> Why does it sound like a parrot? <laughs> I don't know, mate. It's just, I'm just trying to be funny. I'm probably failing. Anyway, you've got Jam Master J, Jibber Jabber Jobber, the stat master of the Master League. He says that there's the model of the shock troopers that was uh, trying to throw a smoke grenade did a weird turn. 
meaning that it kind of threw Kimbo off balance. He often uses the shot grenades to keep shock troopers alive, the smoke grenade at least, and it did not work in this case, or something a bit messy happened. We're not quite sure, but Jibber reckons there was some shenanigans, oh, which could explain, yeah. <laughs> could explain it. But these compositions, what do you favor, man? Look at the length of the list of Isildur's troops in the top right, as opposed to the left. But Kimbo uh, can pack some punch with an IS-2, and he's got a rebuilt shock troops here. As he looks to finally be right, that. 34 was next, but it just got cancelled, Jade XS. Yeah, yeah. So, hmm, SU-85 has got to be, surely? Or Katusha? I think a Katusha could be good here against all these pack guns. Yeah, Ketish is always a good call, mate, but uh, it's a little bit RNG kind of crazy. Oh, come on, Ice-2, drive through the wall, mate. What are you doing? It's I, always I a good think, camera angle. I think he wants to keep that, that blocker there on purpose. That was a very purposeful move there from Kimber. because Seems he doesn't it. want the pack guns to be able to have Oh, this is a big assault now. Doubles this barrage on the position. Panzer IV reverses into position. MG does not get out of there. The veteran sees lost. What a hard front, though. He can't push by that, surely. So Von Ivan's this barrage is there just to help out. Oh, I'm telling you, that MG42, you're never safe from this barrage. Oh, it's the IS2 helps out now. Silver just built a pioneer, so he definitely wants to keep these tanks in full full operation at all times. Grenz being the vanguard unit, just trying to keep the shocks at bay, but of course they can move away. Oh, MG just about gets out from the second or third this barrage. There's been a lot of them regardless. No, nearly an action replay there. Does need to get out with these Grenzi at the very low HP next to the PPSHs of the Shocks. Good move there from Esseldor. But yeah, suddenly Kimbo seems to be, despite having less squads or units, he is turning up the pressure here on Esseldor. And Esseldor's pretty much effectively pop capped, man. When he reinforces all the squads, he can't make another tank. Yeah, the Pioneer may have been a bit of a bad option because, I don't know, the Grenadiers just seem like, oh dear, let's not consider my point, let's just consider this IS-2, it's like a Death Star right now in Isildur's units at Alderaan. I'm going to make you, Princess Ed, watch on as uh, my Kimbo is fully operational. Here yeah, we go. Exactly. Kimbo cannon ready. It's going to delete the planet of Isildur's last hopes here. In this best of five, potentially with this IS-2, it's really done well for itself. I, I thought they were a bit underwhelming in recent patches, but he's bringing it back. RTS Campaigns has never seen such a good use of the IS-2. Let me let me let you all into a little secret. A moving IS-2 is a losing IS-2. Keep that bugger stationary, put it on old fire, and use it like a Death Star. Just honestly, black things, but keep it stationary. Let them come onto you, like this. No, mm. he's moving. That's bad. <laughs> but honestly, when it's stationary, it can really do work. Just like that mine did work there. 90 manpower. Oh dear, Stukas are coming down, Ed. What's happening? I think he even want 20 manpower, but Stukas, without oh, yeah. a snare threat, it's just a waste of munitions. And that's the second Stukas now. Isidore's brought in and got nothing with it, Matt. So I think that's a huge win for Kimbo. As he locks up his own munitions. No, he's... Oh, he blew it all on the, um... Oh, he doesn't have skill planes. Oh, going. no, there it is. It's incendiary uh, yeah, he went for, uh, yeah, he went for incendiary, but I was saying, oh, why doesn't he save for skill planes? But he doesn't have skill oh, planes. Oh, that pack's in no man's land, and no man's land is burning right now. Didn't know whether to go forwards or backwards. There's a seven-man con there, so he's just kept it in the flames. Oh, dear. Conscripts rush in. And that was a fresh new rebuild pack as well, so it's costing this will do a lot of manpower to rebuild all these. I just, again, I just beg the question, why no Tiger? Oh, Pac's been destroyed. He can't defend it. Can he get there? He's safe. That's right. <laughs> just slid in on that final base to cap the Pac-40, but a lot oh, of damage has been the done. Oh, T-70 somehow steals it. Oh, dear. Okay, he's going ah. to try and cap that with the conscript, so he's going to delete it instead with his own Zizz guns. This is good, uh, consistent play here from Kimbo's. Kind of refound his mojo after game three and four. It's, it's found wanting a bit, so uh, yeah, definitely back full guns blazing for this finale game five. What do you like about Nexus Ed? It's not technically amazing. It's not incredible flanking warfare. It's a throwdown. 
It's mm. brutal. It's meaty men me smashing the middle each other. Oh, yeah. yeah, meet me in the middle of the hockey rink and let's take off our uh, gloves and uh, wallop each other. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. A good old walloping. Who's going to come out on top? 30 minutes in. This game has plenty of life left in it. Well, Kimbo has Soviet, so he's now got the KV. Uh, sorry, an SU-85, but he's also got the potential to add a Katusha into this mix, so he's definitely got the pop gap advantage here. And thinks a shot there, that's just the Panzer IV from the IS-2. Ziskun's ready in unison, find two tanks at the same time, well a bit of bouncing action there, as Ed would say, like Beyonce. Again. I don't know why the IS-2 staying in there. He could have oh, lost his IS-2, he just bounced twice in a row. Well, SU-85 is late to the party. Uh, I don't think even Gandalf could uh, rescue his PR. Heart was in my mouth for Kimbo's eyes too. There, what the hell? <laughs> I love it. He, he should have lost. He should have lost that. Really, there's two pack guns that bounced, and the P P4 survives. But yep, and so we just slow things down, have a break, have a kick out, and camouflage his screws. <laughs> As soon as I go uh, cinematically, start running. <laughs> I wanted a bit of. Um... Aided us. Yeah, debated indeed. Anyway, let's um, let's just have a palate cleanser here. Let's just remove the sounds of the game. Take stock. We're th 31 minutes in, Ed. Take a snapshot of the two armies. 95 Popcat meets 83. Let's go. We might as well start now, Ed. The victory went to 209 versus 344. We got our SU-85 sneaking up with a Ziskun. Conscripts are in a prepared position. It was temporarily a triple cap for Isilda. But where do we go from here, Ed? How do they unlock the conundrum that one another has posed? Uh, I thought the key would have been the Katusha, but he did go for SU-85, which is filled him right up on the pop cap now. So he's got seven man guns <laughs> as well. I think they take up an extra pop. So yes, suddenly Kimbo now can't get that Katusha. He has killed off one pack gun. Second one is built for his door, so that's his pop cap filled up now as well back. I do believe a bit of indirect would have been the key to unlock this, but uh, I can understand the SU-85, but he doubles his guns. I think he was okay in terms of anti-tank first. Oh, and here's the ice 2 again, now gaining veteracy 2, it's on um, 13 kills. Got Gren's capping in the centre, we have shock troops doing the same in the south. Another pack 40 building to make up for his losses, so that's where Asilda goes next to complete his army. And it is very much doing that. It's interesting, Kimbo's capping fuel instead of VP with the shocks down south map. At this stage of the game, these kind of VPs, I, I would be prioritizing VPs over any kind of resources at the moment. It's the most crucial one. So we flip on to the end game. Somebody's asking in chat, do I have Corona? I just have a really bad cold. I have been tested and I have hangover. But I'm um, on adrenaline because I bloody love Co2. It's absolutely awesome. So if you're asking what are drugs I'm taking, it's truly a, an insane passion for this very strange World War II strategy game. I couldn't be any more wholesome than that. It's about as wholesome as I get, quite frankly. MG gets forced away. T-70 in recon mode, spotted for him. Panther comes into the centre with Vet 3 pack support. That could be a very dead T-70, but he can't see the prize at the end of the tunnel. We have conscripts being suppressed. This push needs to be cancelled by Kimbo. I just think with double MG up for Isildur, it's still going to be tough for Kimbo to cap and break through. He needs either the Ziz Barrages from the gods again, with some RNG, or he needs to somehow find a way to get a Katusha, even just trading a uh, SU-85 killer T-30, T, uh, P-4 or Panther. Well, that, that Faustine model's player. dead. He kind of disintegrated <laughs> into several pieces. Good work, by the way, in the south by the Pioneer and Gren Combo. That's vital. These little engagements that are on the minimap only, guys, when the casters have been noobs and only casting the big stuff, like tanks going brrr. Well, there's always capping around the sides, and the best players, like Love Nest, Asilda, Dev, M. Kimba, they're always doing a bit of capping elsewhere, and that kind of stuff is vital to winning one of these clutch games, and it's one of the reasons Kimbo's down to 191 victory points. Yep. Yeah, good, good call there, Matt, and uh, it's what you do whilst ever sleep, you know. <laughs> Many strides are made, but oh, it's these cons are just <laughs> luckiest for cheap half ever dodging everything. Do you think um, it was so clumsy? Oh, Panzer Force in jeopardy, Ed. Got Ziskun watching on. Where's the SU? And here comes another Stuka. The party pooper from the skies above. Grenade missed there by Kimbo, but uh, it's just nullified. Everything's just cancelled. 
Cancel uh, Christmas, I'm, kids. I'm always thinking just throw the SU-85, just trade it with a P4, take it out and lose it, and then uh, rebuild with a Katusha, because it definitely is it's so clumped from this with all this. Most of his army, all the support weapons are just begging for a Katusha. Look at that! Oh, That's crazy. It's really crazy. Away, Ed, this, this i got to say, I agree with you, and to be honest, it's not even that crazy on a map such as Nexus with the two extra points. And with the stalemates such as we have right now, the time is now or never to correct your build order decisions. And if this isn't working for you, Kimbo, if you need a bit of Katusha Madness, sacrifice something. Get it out somehow. Some way. Because sitting on 92 Popcat but losing the Victory Point War is not helping. Yeah. Doesn't really need to sacrifice, just trade it and uh, ah, okay. get, get it going another way. But the uh, IS2 Vet2 now, so that's going to help out with its. Uh, lethality here as it looks to black some Grens walking straight into it, but it was moving, Matt. As he said, maybe from stationary gets uh, more power off in his shots. Oof. Panther's there coming for a bit go. of a prowl here, a bit of a flank and shank, as Ed would say. Panther is. Uh, the, sorry, the Panzer 4 in the center gets hit by the SU, but here comes that Panther with the flank. Where are the packs and all this? Where's the Gren support? Has enough attrition been done by Kimbo to survive this ungodly assault by Silver? No! There it is! SU-85 was stuck between all fronts and taken <laughs> out by the packs from afar. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, sorry, yes. Let's see if we rebuild now with Katusha as we hoped. Oh, T-34. Okay, so this might unlock, you know, with the RAM potential. This could be still scary for Isildur's uh, Panther here. Like Ed downloading Tinder, the RAM potential is absolutely incredible. <laughs> North side, we've got MG setup, we've got Pioneers double capping. But look at this again, this is what I'm talking about. That is the stuff that wins these games, it's always off camera. You have to download the replay, lads, and you have to analyse this kind of stuff, because seeing how the greats truly become tournament champs, it, the devil is in the detail. Yeah, seven man cons don't care anything about detail. They do wipe the pack group. That's a nice pick up there from uh, Kimbo. Let's see if he's got any follow up because these G43 guns could really hurt the Sis guns in return. IS2 to the rescue. Yeah, just going to screen it off. So good play there from uh, Kimbo. Is this T34 the little tank that could? We'll have to wait and see. Drives past his comrades. They tap him on the back. They need him in his moments. Like the Urukai Berserker with with all the bombs tied to him. They need to take down Helms deep right now. Grima Wormtongue's told them there's a weakness in the defences. Can they find it? Or will Asilda hold firm? Lord of the Rings reference. Tick your bingo cards, lads, because we're going in deep. Yeah, good uh, surround and pound here down on the south. That MG cruise. Days are numbered, but good spacing of the models. They might make it home. T70 wants to definitely not allow that to happen, and oh, it looks like it's Gonzo, yep. Just got enough space, though, to get the Panther back in, actually. Can the T34 finish the job in the meantime? Another MG set, so I don't know what it's going to do. There it is, it watches its comrade destroyed. Let's check out the centre, see that Grenz are capping there. Is the IS-2 meaty enough to defend itself? We have two packs ready for it, however. I prefer this composition now a lot better from Kimbo. Instead of that SU-85, he's managed to squeeze in two T-34s into his build. This could be the ultimate surround tactics and just encircle Isidore's troops. He doesn't have enough munitions just yet for a skill plane, which would be his ace card. Could completely throw Kimbo a cropper, but uh, we'll have to see. Time waits for no man, Ed. And has Kimbo wasted too much time messing around with tank destroyers when he's a man of mobility? Yeah, he is a, a man of priorities, of... and he's been prioritizing that fuel cap all the time. He doesn't need fuel, he needs VPs. And too many times he's gone to spend ages capping the fuel rather than at least decapping the VP before he does it. So I, I don't agree with those uh, capping prioritizations from Kimbo there down south. Maybe something Yeah, no, possibly. I completely agree. It's all about the VPs now. Fuel's gone. We haven't got time to consider investing in your stock market. What is this flank from this T-34? That's gone wide. The IS-2's coming in. I tell you what, he snuck up on us with a big flank here. Pack's in peril. Panther's reversing. Don't forget about that tower. That could come in useful. Let's see how Kimbo deals with this, Ed. Yeah, mines win games, as your emote says, and uh, definitely could be 
really problematic for Kimber if he hits the teller here, especially with the IST, but there's a P where it's um, put into the build by Isildur. So when that thing's ready to rumble, he could really mess up Kimbo's. Here it comes time. as well, it's close. Where's the target? Is it these Zis guns? Is it the shock troops? What are we gonna see here? Zis reposition regardless. No, it's all on the victory points missing, quite frankly. The Panther and the Panzer fall reverse away, but the onslaught of Kimbo continues. He has a lot of stockpiled manpower and fuel, as does Isildur, but he always favoured the Soviet in the super late game in the manpower war, but Kimbo again not capping that mid. No, oh, he so went he, over it. Seconds, these are vital seconds he could be capping. Oh, we had some big shots in on the C-34 and here comes Goering's finest once more. The, the Stukas, the early war races. Still dominating on the eastern front, it seems, as one T-34 dies. Where's the counterpunch? We've got one Grenadier, two Grenadiers. Where's the Panzers? Being fixed up and a slow repair rate for Isildur at the moment. He does have one vet to uh, pioneer, but yeah, it's taken a failed while just to get his tanks back online. And uh, another T-34 could be decided for Gimbo or a Katusha. I think just with one T-34 and Katusha could be the optimal mix but uh, you saw what he wanted to do earlier just full in distraction play with the IS-2 and then swing round with the T-34. Oh Panther finds the T-70 cap in there's distraction play but he gets rammed for his troubles however the packs are in position you never go lone if you're a Sildur. Will the Panther, uh, yeah, the Panther survives uh, as well? Yeah and Kimbo goes Katisha but you know, that decision was based upon him knowing he had a T-34 alive. That has changed, <laughs> and the Katusha's still in the build, so definitely a different complexion. His uh, armory composition is looking like now. Finally, we see the shock tubes ignore the fuel. Holy hell, that took a while. <laughs> and Kimbo has learned from his ways. He's going straight for that routine. <laughs> I think he's watching the cast, mate. He's getting all of your messages five minutes <laughs> in delay. Ten on at the moment, just in case. <laughs> Having to do an inception here, <laughs> you know. Anyway, T-70's watching on, and oh, here it is! The Stalin organ! Could it be a symphony of destruction for Isildur? Could it propel Kimbo to the upper bracket final? Can it finally unlock the defense of Isildur? Be the Berserker that takes out Helm's Deep. Here comes the Panzerwerfer. T-70 eats some shots, as do the conscripts, but the Katusha's going, shotgun Katusha, straight in there. Yep, two six guns. Following each other around. Oh, you scratch my back, I scratch your style. But uh, again, not cap in the mid. Just. I don't know. What is this anti capping from Kimbo? He's, he's on strike, man. <laughs> <laughs> in the north side, we've got an MG over there. It's a low health T70 goes on. That's great work by Kimbo. Good use of his army instead of repairing. Conscripts are there. We've got an IS-2 now up to 22 kills. Seven vehicles destroyed. That can't be real, surely. There's the Katusha's first volley. <laughs> not enough, not enough. Yeah, got one overshot in, but yeah, didn't wipe any models, so bit of a toothless first Katusha barrage. Base is searing it in, you ah. know. Airfield, of course, is pl killing planes, isn't it? Yeah. Planes yeah. aren't vehicles. They don't count. You can't control them. Anyway, Panther goes in. That attains veteran C3. Got a battle of the big boys now. Bamford taking some good hits there from the IS-2, which is now Fed 3. So that's not getting any bigger or scary. We've had a bit of a push in at the north. Point. The Panzer IV wants that T-70. He's tracking him, but he uh, attacks the combat G's instead. Oh, Grenz are dying. Vet 3 Grenz have to run through the napalm. Oh, they were so close to getting a crit there, Ed. It was palpable. Very lucky Grins. See, this is game one all over again now. Game two, was it, Matt? With Whistledore's Grins luck. Yeah, game two, so. But, we need um, some of that game two for Kimbo, Ed, because he's yeah. down to 84 to 300. Yeah. He's, got, he's got a hell of a ton of fuel, but no manpower, so this begs the question. He should have been prioritizing those VPs, but now it's all to play for for him. He can still get this back. We know he's got such good resolve and zeal he won't there's no quitting Kimbo and uh, this game five is just gonna be right down to the wire I believe uh, one good Panzer worth for Barrage or Katusha strike could could end it good call by uh, Airfield in chat is he's getting to the mark now where he's got a comeback mechanic Tiger if he loses a big engagement he's got the fuel he's got the manpower all yeah. he needs to do is uh, 
have a sacrifice for the Third Reich and he can make it happen. Yeah, you don't normally attribute <laughs> uh, Isildur with sacrifice plays, but yeah, definitely got that in his back pocket. The insta call and Tiger can be so strong, as well as it's got more munitions map for another skill, skill planes attack. So oof, it's just it's Duke of Heaven at the moment in this game. I think we've seen three or four uses of them already. It's the T70 is getting brave, but on one Spot HP. Teammate. Yeah, but that's, that's still risky stuff if a pack was in position or the Panther. Oof. Have had a feel that they were out of position, I guess. Nice shots by the pack, so there's the IS2 gonna have to be healed for a while now. Already down to 60% health. We've got so much bloody happening at the moment. An SU85 slowly being built by Kimbo. He needs to hold these victory points. Let's check out the north. Conscripts versus Grenz. He has to hold up there, but a Panzer Force here to spoil the party. Yeah, and hope to get rid of the green cover. P41, and then the Grenz can really go to town on the cons, but seven man conscripts holding out. So tough to dislodge late game, so yeah, good use of the P4 there as a support unit on this support. Well. Friends in position. Panzer pull backs away. Here comes the Panzer Werfer. Where's the target? It's on that Ziskun trying to get rid of the Vectrum. See, does he do it? How does that survive? <laughs> oh man. The comedy outline of it around it. <laughs> yeah. like... Roadrunner style, indeed. Yeah. But a lot of alpha strike damage, so it is only on two models. Has to go in to heal up, as probably do those Gwens. Combat engineers on duty, keeping uh, King Robert Baratheon in his uh, breastplate, keeping it stretched and keeping him ready for war. I think Kimbo could do with a. I know there's a P worth on the field, but he could still do with a Maxim here. No MG threat from Kimbo's. It's really hurting him in terms of trying to hold any VPs at the moment. That's the, that's the num numbers of Desperation in Sentry Barrage, you said. You've got to call it, man. He's uh, mm. really, it's not the best use of munitions. It's just keeping him alive, quite frankly. It's his uh, life support unit is burning his opponent's grenadiers. And he keeps going back for this SU-85. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, this could be a dead IS. Two here, packs again, but nothing's penetrating. Panther's gone in, the Stukas were lined up as well. The SU-85 was ready. What's happening out there? IS-2's now going forward. This thing's invulnerable, somehow. There's a Katusha barrage to, at the same time, masking it with the planes and the confusion. So good try there from Kimbo to try and snipe the pack guns, but again, doesn't get the models and is losing the mid VP. T-70 plink it away, but it's, I think it's going to be too little too late, even for Kimbo this time. He has no troops in the south, splitting his capping prowess. So, it just seems like Isidore's tightening the new That's the late game. Vet 3 Panther, Vet 3 P4. This oh. is an epic game, though. Oh, why did he retreat that? Come on, is he, you, you manned it up for two squared, you know, two soldat, and at least you could have gone the whole hog there. <laughs> but it's 45 victory points left. He doesn't know any other way but slow and steady, apparently. Sorry, my bad camera angle there. As the IS-2 is fausted, Pax Lavin lined up. Can they finish the job? Oh, look at that Stuka volley! He clicked the ability! Oh, and oh my Wouldn't lord! still going on and Kimbo went forward into it. So. Zoek, Mahina, can the, tele can the, sorry, the TM35 mine save the job? No, he doesn't quite hit it. And a vital miss from the SU85. That is painful for Kimbo here. Oh, but he gets the killing blow. That wasn't Deus Akmahina, that was just full frontal attack. Strangely, he has more VPs now, Kimbo. He's got two under his control, but losing that IS-2 to just the very, very late loiter. I think he thought the ability was done. And he's capping fuel again instead of the... Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm is now. he I'm doing? <laughs> but, uh, will he must hurt you. <laughs> he must really want that insta-call in IS-2 again. So he's saving the fuel for that now. Oh, but, come on. Oh. Don't, don't try and rest. I know you're a Kimbo fan, but don't do mental gymnastics. It's like, oh, yeah, so it's clearly <laughs> trying to get... <laughs> you got 45 victory points ahead. In you a know. parallel universe. Sure <laughs> you know, a little bit of fanboyism <laughs> is fine, but <laughs> let's not be, uh, you know... Not be like me when I'm Ooh. casting Dev M and Aimstrong. Here Ooh. we go. We've got Katusha coming in against the... Uh... <laughs> Finally, <laughs> the Stalin organ singing poppy. Playing on form as the P-Wolf advances in tow. Oh, it doesn't even get a suppression. That is painful. 
Gren's capping in the north. What do we have happening in the south? Oh, that Gren's not going to survive. So Kimbo's holding the line on 45 victory points. Yeah, SU-85. Bit, bit weird flex just left it on its own against two <laughs> pack 40s and a, and a panther, but... Probably get another IS2 big brother to help out soon. Oh, Grenadiers dodged the Molotov in the north. Up against it there with uh, multiple conscripts. Oh, look, look at this Panther now. Misses, but this second one won't be a miss. This is set up. Can the SUA 25 somehow survive here? No, he can't. Now it's the Panther's turn to do his own survival mission. Cleansing the pop cap is Kimbo. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, for another SU-85 indeed. Panthers kiting the Ziss. That's clever by Isilda. And a bit of ring around the roses. Benny Hill theme oh. engaged. Conscripts need to come back and help out the Ziss. Oh. The... oh, Ed. Oh, Ed. It's time for a little bit of Ooh. collective celebratory community <laughs> ejaculation as we have the Panther about to die. Damage engine, but out with the Panthers. We don't care about Panthers. We're all on about. Sing it with me, ladies and gentlemen. 68 and a half tons of Kropstahl and Porsche engine quantified destruction. The destroyer of worlds is here. It's the tank we all had on our posters as children. The Tiger tank, Panzerkampfwagen 6, is here to save the day for Isilda. Can Kimbo survive? Uh, Tigger and Winnie the Pooh are, are out, but it's not the IS-2 that's going to be matching up against it. If Kimbo cancels his T-34, great Katusha barrage there to defend the mid-VP, by the way. But uh, if Kimbo cancels this T SU-85, he's going for that. Oh, it's so much indecision from Kimbo. I guess cancelling T-34 is better, but I don't know, Matt. An SU-85 or a Tiger, which would you rather? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not the Tiger I'm worried about. I mean, the Tiger's great. I mean, with all our... It looks cool. It's a huge distraction and it just soaks up your manpower. The problem for Kimbo Text is not the Tiger, it's these pack guns that are currently annihilating him. The packs are devastating, they really are. And um, the yeah. Veteran C3, Veteran C2, the Katusha needs to save the day, Ed. It needs to find some smoking hot shotgun rounds to the face. It's kills, but just it's not being able to wipe the crew in that Veteran C. And uh, Vet 5 combined pack 40s is no easy feat to push into so i think that's why kimbo is like you know what t-34s are just gonna get slaughtered here so i think he is just gonna have to play it a bit safer sit far deep behind the vps with that oh. su-85 talking away. about deeper talking about vps this is an important battle at this conscript battle here if he loses this it could be devastating this under pressure dum 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 as the g43s push in and he's lost the battle in the north. I can see it on the minimap. The Grens are pushing away the Ziss. He's about to get a double cap with Kimbo only having 45 victory points. The bleed will resume for the first time in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, he blue balled us for long enough, but he finally gave us that Tiger tank did us and uh, I think that's curtains now for Kimbo because the Tiger, it's just got such good AOE on his shots compared to the Panther. Oh, shotgun Katusha round on the Grens! Could this save the day for Kimbo? He gets rid of one. Vet 3, Grenadier. Tiger gets hit by the SU. Oh, but that Zis gun's nowhere to be found. It's been taken out, of course. The SU is the only thing keeping Kimbo in this, and his lifeblood is ebbing away. I think that uh, it looked good on, <laughs> in theory, that shotgun blast, but it needed to be directed at the packs there. Uh, it just seems... Um, Isidore's been able to weather the storm with that panther and now bringing out the big boy tiger with the composition that he has on the vetted pack still. I think he can grind this one out. It's a really good elite troop still here. Credit to Kimbo, still got three vetted uh, conscripts map with a shock troop. Ooh, the Zestuary Tiles getting taken out again. I mean, is that a new? That's what we spoke about. That's the packs for you. Meanwhile, the T-70 is doing one last hurrah. We've got the conscripts going north for the victory point. He's capping in the center. This ain't over until Kimbo says it's over, quite frankly. Tiger's back oh, out with that Maybach he's engine. <laughs> he's got Fausted with the T-70. And when that goes down, all the defense of the VPs, I'm pretty sure, is, is over. There's no Zis guns left. I'm afraid this looks like a legege for Kimbo. And Isildur, having been 2 0 down, that been able to secure three in a row to tie it 
hide the series and win it up. Yeah, Panzerwerf in the center. Combat Engineer is retreating away. Tiger tracking him. Does not get the killing touch. I mean, we've got the shock troops pushing away. The packs. Can Kimbo hold here, Ed? Is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> Unless the shock troops pick up five Panzer Shreks. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think it is. Has the Tiger actually killed anything? Yes, indeed. Wow, it was 18 infantry kills already. That's pretty spicy. Yeah. That's the power of it though, and I, I just think it's a P4 on roids, that's all you got to see it as. So good against infantry, and uh, yeah, Kimbo's not had an answer. After losing that IS-2 with the clutch skill planes from Isseldor, taking it out on the last second of the active strafe, that was probably brought about Kimbo's demise, because it was looking good for Kimbo's comeback potential until the IS-2. He's going to have nightmares about this game, Ed. I don't think it was just the IS-2. It's a build order um, decisions by Kimbo. He just never got going. He never felt truly comfortable with his build order after around the 30 minute mark. I just felt like he had a great foundation, but it just felt he was a little bit wanting. Um, you got to say, though, I agree, obviously, the IS-2 dying to that last salvo was incredibly pivotal. But yeah. um, incredibly pivotal. Yeah, and he changed it up going for Soviets rather than USF, so maybe his confidence was a bit dented by the two wins in a row from Isildur, and he's carried that momentum into Game 5 as the, as the Brit player, and yeah, thoroughly deserved victory if he gets it here. But still, such a spirited defense from Kimbo, even with 12 VPs. Well played by the man, he's done incredibly well here. Grenz evade the Katusha to finish the job as they cap in the center. This is over. GG, well played. Great best of five series. We have Isilda, who on paper you would expect to be going through to the upper bracket final as number one seed, but bloody hell did he have to fight for it. Mm. Very close indeed. And you just think of those games on Mill Road, how uh, Kimber was not in, under any too much pressure at all. And just threw away his Stuart. Suddenly finding now. It's not so easy to beat Isildur in a best of five, as Seeking found out last Master League. So, yeah, credit to Isildur. Consistency is king. Well played. GG's. GG's. There we go. What a series. Well played by Kimber. Well played by Isilda. <laughs> one of the best series we've seen for a long time. Had one of the best of the games, I think, of Mass League, you could argue, Matt, with that Game 2 MLG comeback from Kimberly. But, uh, oh, just heartbreaking stuff on that last game when he lost his IS-2 to the skill planes that was still active. I don't know if he, he caught it or not, but, um, yeah, Isildur definitely capitalized on that and brought home the series 3-2. But Kimbo's not down, but not out, Matt. He goes into the lower bracket, so he can come again. He and can uh, let's check out those lower brackets right artisan. now, actually. And um, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, by the way, but let's check out lower bracket and see where Kimbo arrives. Uh, let's uh, get a bit of refreshing action on this brackets. See what's going on. Oh, it's doing that bloody thing, isn't it? Because so many people on it, it like doesn't like it and uh, deprives <laughs> of us valid information. But we, we can see that, of course, uh, Kimbo beats... Sorry, Isilda beat Kimbo 3-2, sending Kimbo down to face Dev M mm. in, um, <laughs> in next week. God, I've, I've been... Um, yeah, there we go. Been through the walls, man. <laughs> I have. I have I've, I've, I've been like coughing it. and spluttering <laughs> and swallowing... Oh, don't, Oh god, I was going to say my own uh, Evan Martin, <laughs> let's just leave that one alone. Anyway, you have got a horrible, horrible KD for Kimbo. We've got, um, we've got, uh, army value graphs, he just dived after that. Gosh, he kept with it for so long though, Ed, bloody hell. Look, it was nip and tuck, the SU-85 picks for me were a bit of Kimbo conceding, I think he's going to have to play defensive. And whenever you get Kimbo playing defensive, against Isildur, like the master of defensive play, I think. Then then I think he's yeah, <laughs> mentally a little bit of a concession that Kimbo is a bit worried about this one. And uh, yeah, Isildur held in there, got the tiger at the end, started blapping some infantry, and it was it was game over. But 
yeah, as the graphs show, it's such a good close game though. Nonetheless, Definitely. even with Kimbo's uh, decisions and options, you you, you got to say as well on the other side, great great decision making from Isidor. The the Panzerwerfer did enough. He, in the end, he grinded down his opponent. He went with the the Panther flex, and then finally backed it up with a Tiger after after losing it. So I just think. Um, uh, just so many little nip and tuck um, things that could have gone either way. You know, Gwen's living when they could have died, etc. That's the joy of the game. It's so, so many little. Yeah, I mean, you can't argue with the, the fact that he back. kept four grenadiers alive in the entire. I mean, were they alive the entire game? No, he he lost one all that time. You know, that's fantastic. Yeah, and then the packs. We, really we spoke impressed. about the packs. We said they were MVPs, and they certainly were. Let's quickly yeah, check out. The T seventy play from Kimbo as well was very good. Still alive at the end somehow. Well, yeah, the best unit clearly for Kimbo was the um, the SU eighty five tank destroyer. What a meat shield! Of course, using it exactly how it should be used with three deaths there. Fantastic work by Kim Kimbo. <laughs> if only SU eighty fives were as durable as conscripts. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, and uh, we've seen all the graphs already. Um, so that was uh, certainly a cracking game, though. Um, Ed and I um, will be back in future weeks. We're going to have a, t a little hiatus for the Master League now. Um, we're going to let everyone have a palate cleanser weekend next weekend so you can just chill out and don't have to watch amazing action for one week. But uh, And then we'll be back with the upper bracket final after that. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of rest and recuperation half yeah. after the halfway point, but a well-deserved break. Oh, for for me, I get a break, but for you, you got tomorrow as well with uh, Angry Dutch. Oh crap, Which I do. Yes, I forgot about that. Just you know, I thought, I thought my uh, girlfriend was at uh, work. Uh, I didn't realise she was off. It was her first day off in ages, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to organise a best of five. <laughs> didn't, didn't win me any favours. <laughs> I literally forgot she was off that day. My bad. Just lady anyway. in the champ afterwards and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as she sees Angry Dutchman, she'll realise. <laughs> All right. Good stuff, though, Matt. Thanks for having me. Brilliant cast today. As ever, Soldier on pleasure, with man. your hangover. No That's hangover, great. no problemo. And uh, I think we, I think the the audience in the chat as well love those games because Kimbo and Isidore fought their hearts out today. So well played to both players. Congrats. Certainly did. All right, and guys, um, we're going to leave it there. We're going to see if there's anybody left to raid. Um, there's no more Company of Heroes streams. Interesting. Let's just All right, hot top stream. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to see what we can There is a Shocko boy. Shocko Lada Tears. He is streaming if you want to keep it code to. Yeah, I see that. That's good, good. Just saying that. Just saying dot com. Yeah. Does anybody want the Z host? I think they want your bathwater, Matt. That's the, the <laughs> real <laughs> question. <Yeah. laughs> that soggy stalk bathwater ball. Oh, dear. Anyone wants Z host? I'm trying to get this bloody bracket to refresh. It's proper on slow mode, unless it's not been updated. But, uh,. Does that mean Quiritz versus Asherblot is yet to play? Does anybody know if that's played yet or not? Because I'd love to host whoever's doing that one. Oh, it's Stern Panther um, doing stuff. What's going on? Can somebody tell me if that's actually played or not? Because I actually do not know. Oh, I can check the replays, can't I? Here we go. Ah, yes, it has played indeed. So just waiting for the brackets to refresh on my end. My prediction was just about right on that one then. Asher did come through against Quirits, but tomorrow is a pop of 50-50, Matt. You're in for a treat there as well. Yeah, certainly. Um, let's let's host Helping Hands, eh? Good old Mr. Hands. Give him his joy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Hands streaming. Oh, poor Shocko boy. <laughs> He's <laughs> brought a lot time. of people to the game, Next don't time. forget. He, is, he is, our, is our only pro streamer. Um, and he's uh, many eyes. He's got many children. Uh, just, just go and tell him that uh, 5vp maps they are good you just have to not float 600 manpower don't tell him that don't tell him that 